Welcome to the Mission Sacramento Mile, powered by Law Tigers. As you can see, for you folks at home that are watching online or live right now, they're still doing a little track maintenance. We'll be on the racetrack here shortly. For you folks here in attendance, it's a hot one. Please stay hydrated. We'll be on the racetrack here real soon. About two minutes away from getting on the racetrack.
here to the Mission Sacramento Mile, powered by Law Tigers. Bikes are on the racetrack. It is time for our first round of practice. This is the Mission Super Twins, the premier class, and they are rolling onto the racetrack. They come out according to their point settings. It's a hot one out here in the capital city, Sacramento, California. The one is the jammer, Jared Beast, four-time Sacramento Mile winner. The three is Briar Bowman, the 32, Dallas Daniels, 95 is J.D. Beach, the 20, Jared Vandekoy, 44 is Brandon Robinson, 37, Bronson Bowman, 67, Dash and Davis Fisher, the 52, Shana Texter Bowman, the 25, Ben Lau, the 23, Jeffrey Carver Jr. on the XR 750 and the 11 of Andrew Luker. Bikes are on the track. First group, first round of practice. Briar goes up off of the groove out here by the air fence and turns one and two. They're just getting up to speed. There's a lot of moisture in the racetrack. It looks really good, but Briar, he says, I want to pull out of the way. He'll go back to the back of the pack. He's actually getting up to speed down the back straightaway. Now we're keeping our eyes on the 95 JD Beach. This is the Mission Super Twins class, the premier class of the day. And this class is sponsored by SNS Cycle. This is their first practice session. The Super Twins will get two rounds of practice here today. Everybody else will get one round. 95's got some company coming on the front straightaway. Here comes the teammates, the 44 and the 20. Robinson's on the 44. The 20 is Jared Vandekoy, who finished second here last year. We had a double header here last season. Vandekoy finished second on Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. And he got a fourth. He had a second and a fourth last year when we were here. Meese at the top spot here in this practice group. Nice, Robinson, Bronson Bauman on the Harley Davidson up there in that third spot on the XG 750, the latest motorsports XG. Lead group coming this way on the front straightaway. Robinson's pulled away from the 20 of Vandekoy. They were just bunched up together last time by. Me still at the top spot in this first round of practice. Robinson now up to second with the 40.594. Last time by a 41.276. Bronson's last time by is a 4-4. A few riders are pulling off into the pit area. The one of Meese, he's in the pit area. So is the three of Briar Bauman. They both pull into the pits and they're both off the track. So the one and the three not happy with what's going on out there. They pull off into the pit area. He's going to talk to Corey right now, his brother-in-law. I can see Briar is talking to Corey. 37, Bronson Bauman on the screen on the XG750 Harley Davidson. Gets it really sideways right there coming off of turn number four. They tuck in, try to get as small as they can, get under the paint. Bronson across the start finish line. There goes Shayna Texter Bauman, the 52 here. The 11 of Andrew Luker, that's the Rackley Racing Kieran Racing entry. There's a 23, Jeffrey Carver Jr. currently in the 10th spot with a 4.2.524. Another look at Bronson Bauman. White flag is out. One more lap to go in this first group of practice. Four zero point three seven eight. Quick time so far in this first group. First round of practice. Another bike pulling off the racetrack. The thirty seven will take the bike to the pit area. 52, Shayna Texter Bauman on the front side. White flag is out. Here comes the 23 of the Wizard, Jeffrey Carver Jr. On the XR750, Harley Davidson doing it for Dodge Brothers. And coming off of turn number four, here comes your leader to the checkered flag. There's Shayna Texter Bauman on the 52 factory Indian motorcycle on the screen. Dallas Daniels up to second, a 4-0.442 for Dallas. One win this season was at the Red Mile the first day. Production Twins are sitting in the holding pen. They'll be up next. 52 off the pace coming into the uh, attention of the crew in the pit area. Here's Jeffrey Carver Jr., the 23, taking that checkered flag. Shana Texter Bauman has pulled to the inside and she'll take her 52 factory inning back to the pit area. The rest of the riders will take that cool down lap. They will exit the racetrack just before the grid area. That's where they enter and exit the racetrack out here at the Cal Expo, Sacramento Mile. Up 
Up next, Production Twins. Five lap sessions for all practice groups. There's a look at the wizard, Jeffrey Carver Jr. on the 23 XR750 Harley, the winningest motorcycle in American flat track history. They're told they can stop on the outside of turn number four on their way back to the pit area and do a practice start if they would like in the first round of practice or the first round of qualifying or both. Up next, Production Twins, sponsored by Vance and Hines. The 33, Jesse Janich is our points leader. The one of Corey Texter. The 60, Nick Armstrong from Norco, California. The 109 is Billy the Kid. That's Billy Ross from Flint, Michigan. The 10, Johnny Lewis on the Royal Infield. 34, Cameron Smith. 15 is Mikey Rush. 61, Casey Sisko. 47 is the Missile, Michael Hill. 45, Shelby Miller on a KTM 790 Super Duke. And the 50 from Petaluma, California. It's Jimmy McAllister. Bikes are rolling onto the track. Raymond Rizzo waving that yellow flag. Bikes are up to speed. There's Casey Sisko just getting going on his Kawasaki 650, doing it for raffle racing. Jim Turchilla actually won that motorcycle in a raffle. Now they're going racing here at American Flat Track. Down the backside, 33, Jesse Janish, the Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson. Janish finished third here last year. And also a, uh, gosh, I don't see him on the second day. Must have had issues on the second day. Janish out front, the 33, Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson. He's our points leader. We're gonna do a little track maintenance right after this group. Janish out front. There's a look at the two-time champ. The one, Corey Texter, is at the back of the pack on the G&G &G Racing Yamaha Racing entry. Help from Mission Foods. The list goes on and on for Corey Texter, his two-time champion, his final season of American Flat Track as a full-time racer. We might see him here and there. Here's a look at 34. There's Jimmy McAllister, the 50. Here comes the 61. On the screen, they're going off into turn number three. There's Corey Texter on the one. Casey Cisco goes up the racetrack just a little bit, allows Corey Texter to come on through on the one bike. A lot of them are pretty spread out here in this first group of production twins. They will get one practice and two qualifying sessions. Janish at the top spot with a 4.2.510. Corey Texter on that last lap by was a 4.2.699 up to second place. Texter gets by another rider. That's Jimmy McAllister on the 50. Billy Ross currently third on his Harley Davidson 4.2.834. Billy Ross and his dad have been gone away from home for about five weeks, living out of the van, old school flat tracking style. Janish across the start finish line, 40.982. That is his quickest lap, 40.9, about six tenths of a second slower than the Super Twins. Production Twins, production-based motorcycle engines. They put them in flat track racing frames. They go racing. Super Twins has had the purpose-built flat track motorcycles are allowed to race in the Super Twins class. Michael Hill up there in the eighth spot. Nick Armstrong moves up a spot or two up to sixth on the 60 Yamaha. So it's Harley Davidson Yamaha Royal Infield. Johnny Lewis now up to third. Billy Ross slides back to fourth. Mikey Rush is in fifth. On the screen right here in front of us is the 47 of Michael Hill. Behind him, Corey Texter, and here comes a rider right behind him. That's Cam Smith, so a couple of Yamahas, a couple of PA riders going by the 47 into turn number one using the double draft pass. With Cisco, Shelby Miller, the 45, Jimmy McAllister on the 50. Leaders already down here in turn number three and four. The white flag will fly this time by at the Cal Expo, Sacramento Mile. First round of practice, production twins are on the racetrack. Boy, Texer has his hands full right now. The 34, Cameron Smith, right on the back tire. A pair of Yamahas working together, maybe. And turns straight for now. Corey Texter gets it a little bit sideways. Up the inside comes the 34, Cameron Smith making the move down there, coming onto the front straightaway. Now, Corey Texter goes back up the inside, gets by Cameron Smith, going into turn number one.
checkered flag will come out this by. This is our first and only round of practice for our production twins. It's the Mission Production Twins, sponsored by Vance and Hines. There's the checkered flag for the 33 of Janish. Billy the Kid, Billy Ross is on the screen right now, currently fourth quickest with a 4-2.834. He has one win on the season at the Laconia Short Track. Boy, Texter across the start finish line right behind him, Cam Smith, but it's Janish quickest here in production. Twins, the 33 bike still on fire, a 4-0.982. Hottest rider right now in production. Twins is Janish. Checkered flag is out. They'll take this cool down lap and take it back to the pit area. We're going to do some track maintenance for as soon as the track is clear. Good time to stretch your legs. Don't forget the legends of flat track will be downstairs signing autographs here today from 2.45 until 5.15. And also, every legend that will be down there signing autographs, they have two banners down there that they're selling for the rookie class of 1979. And that will help the three riders, Dominic Calendres, James Monaco, and Oliver Brindley. Everything they sell and raise money for this weekend will go to those three riders. So if you want to help out with some of our injured riders, go down there, see the legends. You can buy one of their banners. There's two banners for every legend that is down there. You might even be able to get it signed if you get it now, get it early enough. Charlie Roberts and the gang with the rookies of 79 selling those banners downstairs. The marketplace is kind of out front in the... Uh, the asphalt area between the racetrack and the grandstand so you can go on down there and see what's going on at the American Flat Track Marketplace. The event t-shirts are underneath the grandstands and several vendors are underneath the grandstands and out front on the asphalt area. There's a good look at the Law Tiger. This is the Mission Sacramento Mile powered by Law Tigers. Again, track maintenance is on the schedule next. So we're going to take a look at it, see what's going on out here at the hot Sacramento Mile. We're we'll gonna take a quick break. When we come back, AFT singles will be coming out for their first round of practice. Again, track maintenance coming up right here at the legendary Sacramento Mile. This is the Mission Sacramento Mile, powered by Law Tigers. Right here at the capital city, Sacramento, California. We will be right back. Hey, is that your stomach growling? Or the sound of thousands of cc's circling the track? Fuel up for race day with Mission Foods. Rev those taste buds with fast and easy to create recipes that are winner's circle delicious. Try some of our mouth-watering tacos to piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. Start those engines, because Mission has you covered from the green flag to the checkered flag. Now that's too fast, too tasty. Riders, let your queries be known. Yeah, hi. Instead of letting passengers wrap their arms around us, can we put little handles on our jackets? Deny. Can you imagine? I want a new nickname. Can you guys start calling me Snake? No, Brian. Deny. How about we all get close to see if we can save with America's number one motorcycle insurer? Approved. Cool. Hey, if Brian's not going to be Snake, can I be Snake? No. no. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda is proud to sponsor the Al Lamb's Dallas Honda Singles Challenge. It's a winner-take-all, $2,500 dash for cash. Enjoy the fastest and richest four laps in AFT singles racing. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda, DallasHonda.com. The 2022 season will see new challenges for Royal Enfield. More racing, more racers, and more energy than ever before. For the first time ever, the Moto Anatomy powered by Royal Enfield team will participate in the full calendar, including the miles and build train race grid, expanding to 15 riders and seven races. More action than ever before. 
Cena is proud to be the official motorcycle communication system of Progressive American Flat Track. Ride connected with industry-leading mesh and Bluetooth communication systems, plus sound by Harman Kardon speakers and microphone. Head over to the marketplace to demo one of Cena's premium motorcycle communication systems today. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler for our eighth year to Progressive American Flat Track, providing championship rings for each class in 2021. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. Klotz Synthetic Lubricants is proud to be the official lubricant of American Flat Track. Family owned and made in America since 1959, Klotz has built its reputation by answering the call of racers and performance enthusiasts who won't settle for anything less than superior synthetic lubricants. Racers and performance buffs around the world rely on Klotz to get them to the checkered flag. Order today at KlotzLube.com. Mobile View has been providing state-of-the-art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. With over 300 World Championship titles, for 44 years, Olean's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports, for road or track, dirt or asphalt. When you choose Olean's products to elevate your performance, you get Olean's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. Memphis Shades brings you a whole new level of style when it comes to motorcycle windshields and fairings. The quality, style, and selection set these products apart from the pack. Memphis Shades designs and builds all windshields, fairings, and hardware in-house. Raw materials in, finished goods out. Made in Memphis. Style that works. Sideburn is the world's finest go-fast turn-left magazine. It is available to buy at Progressive AFT's trackside merchandise booths and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit SideburnMagazine.com. Dunlop is proud to be the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. What we learn from racing is rolled into our production tires, such as the Dunlop K180, a street-legal version of the aggressive DT3 Flat Track tire with the K180. Street riders can now have the authentic flat track tire experience. No other tire company has won more American motorcycle championships than Dunlop. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. We've always believed there's a right way to make something. It takes craft and dedication and working till it's your best. That's our standard. And we build motorcycles for people who share it. Designed and assembled by hand, here at home, the way we made them in 1901, the only way we know. Hey, is that your stomach growling? And hey, welcome back to the Mission Sacramento Mile, powered by Law Tigers out here at the Cal Expo. We're at the capital cities, Sacramento, California. There's some ducks and 
geese swimming around in the pond in the infield? I don't, I don't know what they're the coast. Here's a look at some action from the Springfield Mile where we'll be heading in two weeks. This is today is the first of three mile races in a row. This mile stretch is going to be hard on the teams, hard on equipment, but it'll be great for us fans with some great motorcycle racing. Look at that Insta360 camera shot right there off the back tail section. Those they go down the back straightaway here. JD Beach tucked in right behind them on his Essence and Racing Monster Energy Yamaha. And the Springfield Mile, those two races there on Labor Day weekend will be part of the progressive Triple Crown. We did cancel the main event there, it rained out at the Black Hills Harley-Davidson, or the Black Hills Half Mile. So the last race of the season will actually be the final leg of the Triple Crown gets the most points in those three actually four races three different kinds of racetracks will be the triple crown winner picking up an extra twenty five thousand dollars so it's a race within a race within the season like that on board footage right there looking back there's robinson right behind him on the 44 so we are at the sacramento mile right here today two weeks from this weekend we'll be headed on to springfield illinois the uh legendary springfield mile Fastest two racetracks we go to all season long. Got a question coming in from the truck for us up here in the booth. The question is, what is the best race I've ever seen at the Springfield Mile? And I'd have to say all of them. I, I just, I love the mile racing. Well, here in Springfield, but uh, you know, when they, when they used to crown the champion at the Springfield Mile, I think those were my favorite, probably watching Ricky Graham who broke his hand or his wrist and still went out there, still had a good finish and still won the championship. Probably the most memorable for me, but uh, there's a lot of memories at all the miles. The, the, as far as best race out here at the uh, Sacramento Mile, I don't know. I think I raced out here quite a few times, but some of the best ones I've seen out here was, you know, watching the dominance, and it goes in spurts. Like, Scotty Parker will win several races in a row. Chris Carr, they had some epic battles out here. You know, Scotty Parker won here 13 times. Chris Carr won nine. So when we came out here, it's usually those two on the factory Harley Davidsons would usually run up front. And then you count Brian Smith, who won a seven-race in a, in a row streak. He won here on uh, Indians and Kawasaki's. Brian Smith had this place figured out, and now it seems like they've passed the torch on to Jared Meese. Jared's won here the last four races in a row out here. Shane and Texter's won here four times on a single cylinder motorcycle. And last year on the single, Trevor Bruner took the sweep on the uh, on the Turner Hondas, but now he's switched brands. He'll be on the Essence and Yamahas. So there's just always good racing at the miles. A lot of strategy. You have to figure out and get yourself in the right position to you know, kind of try to win the drag race or the draft race down here to the start finish line, which is right in front of the Jumbotron, the Mobile View big screen. They actually put some more moisture on the racetrack, so we are taking the time right now early in the program to add some more moisture to the racetrack as we're looking back at some onboard footage from Springfield, Illinois, last year. Look at all. So we're taking our time right now doing the track maintenance while we can, while we have uh, a little break in the action before we bring out the rest of the fans start showing up. So we're early in the day. So again, we've had two groups of practice so far. We've had the Mission Super Twins out there, and the quick time so far was the one rider, Jared Meese, with a 4.0.378. We've also had one group of production twins out there on the racetrack with a Jesse Janish with a 4.0.982, so about three six tenths of a second difference between Super Twins and Production Twins. Again, taking our time right now, doing some track maintenance, putting some more moisture on the racetrack. They brought the Street Sweepers also, trying to. You know, set the line right now. There is a good look at the uh, water truck down there going into turn number three. So we're taking the time right now to add some more moisture to the racetrack. They've been putting water on it uh, all week long. It actually started on Monday when I was here Thursday. There's actually water standing on the racetrack. So they've done everything they can to put the moisture down. But it's hot. It's in the middle of August in Northern California, which it's always nice and warm out here. But we got the uh, track maintenance going on right now. When we get into the racing action, up next will be our, looks like a, the 
Parts Unlimited AFT Singles practice will be next, followed by the Mission Super Twins second round of practice. We'll take a break, and then we'll come back with qualifying round one. Qualifying round two, the pits will be open. Right now it's scheduled from 5 until 6 o'clock or 5 until 5.50. Opening ceremonies at 6 o'clock out here on the West Coast time. So while they are doing the track maintenance right now, we're going to take a look back at the Super Twins main event from last year, night number one right here at the legendary Sacre Mile. We'll be back. Enjoy the footage from last year. And the pressure builds. Only three races to go, and the points keep getting tighter between Briar Bauman and Jared Meese. Let's get an update from Kristen B. How can Briar Bauman keep Jared Meese in check? Well, I asked him that earlier in the day, and he said, I have to shake him early on. I cannot wait. I have to get him right out of the gate, and that's Briar Bauman's attack strategy. Now, I also asked Brian Smith that question. Why? Well, he's the only other rider to steal a championship from Meese in the last 10 years. Brian Smith said this. He said, Briar needs to get out of his own head. Stop worrying about what Jared is doing, and don't feed into the intensity of this rivalry. Brian continued by saying, Briar needs to control his emotion because every Every reaction or upset is blood in the water for Jared Meese. That is Brian Smith's advice for a Briar Bauman, guys. Well, Jared Meese, just a master in so many ways. He's been through these battles so many times. He got to figure the mind games. It's going to be advantage to the veteran, and he also is very good in the mile track. So I got to feel, at least in my opinion, some pressure on Briar Bauman to answer back tonight. What do you think, Brad? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jason. I mean, Jared is great at playing those mind games he's the first person to try to pull pour salt in the wound so he's trying to get underneath Briar's skin here tonight let's see if he's able to do it here again so much on the line Sacramento mile main event we're underway looks like a great start possibly but no Jared oh. Meese takes it over I thought it was going to be Briar Bauman's well he learned so Meese spun the tire off the start of that mission challenge earlier in the night this time he got grip and he goes right to the lead and davis fisher who has been fast throughout the afternoon and now into the evening is second yeah, it looked like briar actually missed a gear off the start or off the starting line that's what sent him back but this is not what the competition wanted is to let jared mees out to an early lead they got to latch onto the back of him and pace him and not let him get away Sammy Halbert in third. He's certainly capable. He won that mission challenge earlier tonight. So Fisher and Halbert could play the spoilers. Halbert looking to make a move, and he does. Yeah, Halbert gets the second, but you see how Jared already kind of made that move to the inside of the straightaway on the first lap there. That's just him trying to break the draft. I mean, he's doing everything he can to try to break away from these guys early. On the SNS on board, the Insta 360 of Mies. Yeah, he's already trying to stretch it out. Look at that. And he just cooks it off in the turn three there. You can see how uh, he just put another three bike links on these guys going in the turn three. These are long races, especially on a mile track. But if you're Bauman back here at fourth and Mies is already starting to get away, you got to be a little bit worried. Yeah, you definitely can see it almost in the, the demeanor of Briar Bauman just trying to do everything he can to get by Davis Fisher because he knows, he sees Jared already stretching it out, and he knows that if he gets away that he's going to be almost impossible to track down. Jared Meese trying to do what you normally cannot do, and that is get so far out front they cannot draft him. That is exactly what he did at our last race a couple of days ago at Springfield, and he's getting away again. Yeah, these guys just don't have the grip coming off the corner that Jared does. And Jared's just so good at these types of racetracks of keeping his wheels in line, keeping his ro his momentum rolling through the corners. Uh, it's just a combination of both having a great motorcycle underneath him and him just being an expert at these types of tracks. And he's had the same crew working with him for so long. Kenny Tolbert, Bubba Benley, all the riders, all the people that the rider gives credit to behind the scenes. They know this track inside and out. Good battle right here. Fisher trying to get around. And now he actually almost bumped Halbert, and that almost allowed Bauman to make a move. Yeah, you see Bauman taking like an outside line coming into turn three, kind of opening up the center of his corner. That'll help him be able to, to, to roll through the corner better. There's also some bumps developing going in there, so maybe he's got something going on there. So he's still stuck in fourth. Great battle between Halbert and Fisher. They've been going back and forth. And Jared Vanderkoy, who is in fifth, starting to close. 
Yeah, these guys, they could all bunch up here before too long if they start to race each other too much. But look at Breyer going around Whoa. the outside. Wow. That could have been bad for Davis Fisher. He, he held on to it, though. That could have been a high side. Yeah, he almost clipped the back of Bauman, who had to get desperate. He tried the outside line. He picked up a position, and now he's working on Halbert. But look at the lead Mies has built. Yeah, Mies has a huge gap now. Look at Breyer smoking it around the outside of Sammy as well. Doesn't oh. hold on to it, though. And he almost threw it away, fighting to get back to the groove. He's just doing anything that he possibly can to try to get by these guys to see if maybe he can break away and start to track down Jared, but making a few mistakes in the process. Well, is that a mistake or is that I've got to try a line that might not be ideal? That outside line did not work that time. It definitely is a little bit of both. I mean, he is uh, not able to draft by going down the straightaway. Sammy Halbert seems like he has a very strong engine. Say that as he almost, yeah, see right there, yep. he wasn't able to draft by. The, the Nyla Coolbeth team has it going on. That bike is running good as Sammy slips up a little bit there. Now it might be exactly what Breyer needed to be able to, to get by going down the straightaway as well. See how he pats himself on the butt right there. That's saying, follow him behind me. He doesn't want these guys to start racing each other because if they're racing each other coming into the corner every lap, it's going to slow them down. So they want to just follow each other. See this move right here. Breyer goes around the outside and just shuts the door on Davis. Davis just had to go off the groove, not to go to get into the back of him. That was a good move by Davis to, to hold on to it. And Breyer here just getting a little out of shape off the groove. But uh, this is this is Breyer's championship to lose right now, and he's doing everything he can to try to get himself in the second to minimize damage. Well, those are two close calls. Fisher, a good job saving his race, but he could have uh, taken Bauman down with him, and then Bauman almost crashed the next time around. And for all the work that Bauman's putting in, look at this. Halbert still there in second. Oh, we got a couple other contenders. J.D. Beach on the 95. Estenson Yamaha in contention. And same thing, Vanderkoy continues to lurk. So great action here in Sacramento, but a long ways back from Jared Meese, who has taken off. Briar Bauman has to get into the number two spot. Pressure building here. American flat track from Sacramento. You don't even see the leader, Jared Meese. He is long gone. But behind him, what a fight we have seen. Sammy Halbert, very stingy with the number two spot. He has not allowed the number one of Briar Bauman to get him. How about Davis Fisher marching himself back up into this, this podium spot battle? I mean, he was a ways back after slipping off the groove, and he's tracked these guys back down. I cannot believe that. Multiple passes, and he has pace. In fact, it looks like he's looking to set up a pass right here on Bauman, and he gets it. He does, and it wasn't well. Look at Breyer says, no, I'm going to hold it on. It goes right back around him, almost does a replay. What sent him off the groove in the first place? You have to do it, though. You have to do it. Breyer Bauman, your series leader, working on three straight titles. He is losing points quickly. Look at how big the lead Jared Mees has. So we are seeing Bauman take huge risks here. Yeah, these guys haven't quite worked together, though. You see how Breyer, when he tapped himself on the butt when he got by, uh, Sammy there and these guys he just wanted to be able to work together because them fighting each other each lap is, is just letting Jared get further and further away instead he cannot solve the riddle that is a 69 of Halbert and he continues to deal with pressure from Fisher Vanderkoy Beach they're all right there yeah, this is anybody's race. I mean, Banner Coy, he's kind of in the uh, in the good position right now because if any of these guys make a mistake, he's going to be there to capitalize on it. Fisher, oh, gave it a look to try to draft past Bauman. Could you imagine if Bauman ends up off the podium tonight? Pressure is on. You're defending champion. Yeah, you can kind of just see the anxiousness in Breyer's riding right now where he's just trying everything he can to get by Sammy Halbert. There is an eight point difference between first in a race and third. So Bauman is a 12 point lead. He would lose eight of those 12 points if it ends like this. So he's got to at least get the second. Mies is gone. What a performance by the five time champion tonight. But this battle for second is intense. 
Hey, you seen him take a peek over his shoulder, Briar did, in between three and four there. Just seeing how many riders are there and maybe trying to size up a, a position where he can actually draft by going down the straightaway. I mean, you got to have a little bit of a distance to be able to run up on him to get the draft, and that's been hard for him to do on Sammy. What can you say about Jared Meese? Although I will give you some credit here, Brad. When we had that stretch of four miles coming up, you kind of predicted that this might happen. You know, if I was a betting man, I would have I would have put my money on Jared to win all four of these races. I mean, he's been so strong in the miles the last couple years. And I mean, Olin's racing suspension with Jimmy Wood, those guys have been working so awesome to be able to get that bike hooked up. And it's really showing here tonight. Yeah, so he's looking at three wins in a row. We'll be back here tomorrow night for more from Sacramento. Meanwhile, this battle for second, Bauman keeps trying and Halbert keeps holding him at bay. Yeah, look at Jared Vandercoy. He is right there. I mean, he has the draft at the end of the straightaway, but doesn't have anywhere to go. But he might be just saving his cards the last couple laps to be able to pounce on these guys. We have not seen much of the draft passing. They have run in this order the majority of the way. Now onto the front stretch. And actually, Halbert, a couple of bike lengths on Bauman. Yeah, Sammy's a smaller rider than the riders behind him. I mean, he probably has a good you know, maybe 20, 30 pounds on these guys, and, and that's horsepower. Horsepower is definitely weight on bigger tracks like this, and he's small, so he's able to get out of the wind. That can definitely play a factor of why he's able to, you know, be hard to draft by going down the straightaway. Oh, the aggressive tuck to try to neutralize the aerodynamics. Oh, Bauman <laughs> used it, almost made the pass. Yeah, he's almost up in the cushion there. It's like, you really don't see that on a track like this, trying to, you know, go a, a wider line, but that just shows, you know, Briar's leaving it all on the table, trying to get by. He has to, two laps to go. He is still not able to get around Halbert, and now Fisher's down to the inside, almost a third away. And yeah, these guys, if they, they might come down to the last corner. They could uh, get aggressive and try to shove one another off the groove. Look, if you're Davis Fisher, it's been a long time since you've had a podium. You do not care about the points for Bauman. You want to make this pass, and here comes the 67 to do it. Yeah, he's desperate. I mean, he wants to be able to get a... Wow. Whoa! That was that, almost in a replay of what we saw earlier, and he makes the move. Man, that is not what Breyer wanted. Man, he's all the way back to fifth right now. Oh, it's a disaster. Jared Meese could be the points leader at the end of this race if it ends like this. One lap to go. Bauman has to pull out a miracle. Yeah, Breyer is going to have to to really pull out the boxing gloves right now. He got to be careful not to, to, to put anybody down or put himself down. This is fast racing, but he has to put himself back on the box. Fisher leaning on Halbert, and he takes over second. Look at Breyer up around the outside. Wow, Woo! we got... Vandercoy on the inside pushes Fisher off the groove. And somehow Bauman was able to follow him through. So Vandercoy, as you called it, goes from fifth to second. Look at this. Jared Meese coasts across the line with a massive win and maximum points as well. Battle is on. And it's going to be Vandercoy. And how did Bauman recover for third? Man, that was a crazy last corner for those guys. I mean, with uh, Fisher slipping off the groove, that allowed. Briar to get back on a podium, but nothing but celebration for the Mies camp. You see Kenny Tolbert there, it is pumped up. And that guy knows how to build a, a rocket ship of an engine, and it showed here tonight. Oh, there is no doubt, no challenge at all. Started pulling away immediately. You saw Vanderkoy sitting back there, and I think you liked the spot he was in. Yeah, I definitely think he did. I mean, he put it in the right position on the last lap. Just got underneath Davis Fisher and slid him off the group and took over second. Jared, once again, you were able to check out from the rest of the pack. That race, was it more mentally or physically demanding for you? Oh, way more mental. I, uh, heart rate was low around there today, and the track was so smooth. It definitely wasn't really that physical at all. Just all mental, trying to put it all together, honestly. And uh, I was a little bit frust frustrated after the, uh, the dash for cash just because I made a mistake slipping the groove, and I just didn't get control back quick enough and you only got four laps so I was like starting to second think am I losing the mojo you know am I losing the momentum and uh, I actually got the whole shot um, and just started picking them up and putting them down honestly and uh, the bike was phenomenal um, it was the best the bike's been all day long was in that main event and and um, we got one more tomorrow and we got a little bit of a break then so uh, I don't know if I want to lose that momentum Yes, because he definitely has the momentum. Now, you saw the battle for second on back and how much drafting and passing and close racing get in a mile. And then there's Jared Meese, who pulled away.
with a huge win. AFT at NBCSN is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle, official partner of Progressive American Flat Track. By Super 73, the official electric bicycle of Progressive American Flat Track. And Mission Foods has you covered with race day recipes that are too fast, too tasty. We are back, a spectacular battle with championship implications. And it was Jared Vanderkoy who got it done for second tonight. On a backup bike. Uh, earlier in the day you guys were moving between the A and the B bike throughout practice and qualifying you guys figured out the A bike were able to be out there and be in the mix I mean when you have technical miscues like that early on in the day uh, how does it feel to get out here and finish the day on the podium through all that adversity it was very discouraging early you know to bring the gremlins from Springfield to here it was just kind of like man not this again not this again but hey you know my missions foods through systems HCRR bike was great and uh, we moved our way forward in the main event. Who says a big boy can't go big on the miles? <laughs> Punching the big hole through the air. And Vanderkoy has been strong all year. He sees fourth in points. But the big story, Jared Meese has taken it from a 12-point deficit to just four. And we have one more mile coming up. And it doesn't look like anyone's going to have an answer for him there because he was dominant tonight. How about Briar Bauman finishing in third? Let's check in. Briar Bauman took a risk in those final laps, and sometimes at tracks like this, you have to do that. You leapt the high line. It didn't work out as uh, dominantly as you may have hoped. However, fought your way back to the podium. Briar, you were trying everything out there. Yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't get by Sammy by the line, so I was like, you know what? I got to go for it. And when I did that, uh, Davis poked it up underneath me, and I went all the way back to, I think, fifth. And uh, I was like, well, that was a really, really bad move on my end. And uh, fortunately, Jared ran Davis off the groove, and I went around the outside of Sammy. So I went back to where I was. It just got really chaotic for a really short amount of time. So hats off to everyone that uh, was in that groove. It was, it was the longest race I've ever been a part of. I couldn't draft Sammy, so I was trying to just sit back and not let anyone draft me. And uh, that's tough, and it's a long 14 minutes when that's a scenario. So hats off to Jared Meese. Mile again just smokes us. It's, uh, it's good. He wasn't swerving at us because he was a straightaway ahead. So... Uh, we have another shot tomorrow, and uh, hopefully we don't get smoked. Wow. Brutal honesty all around. Briar has got to figure something out. Mies is on a roll. Yeah, he sure is. I mean, Briar has to get second tomorrow at worst and be able to just minimize the damage to go into the final round. Shout out to Trevor Bruner getting the win in the singles class and a champion crown in production twins of Corey Texter. Dominant performance by Jared Meese in Mission Super Twins. For Brad Baker and Kristen Beat. I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for joining us from Sacramento. We've always believed there is a right way to make something. It takes craft and dedication. and working till it's your best. That's our standard. And we build motorcycles for people who share it. Designed and assembled by hand, here at home, the way we made them in 1901. The only way we know. Speedsport has been America's motorsports authority since 1934. Get news, results, and commentary from the most connected experts in the business. Covering all forms of motorsports from flat track to NASCAR and everything in between. Bookmark Speedsport.com on your mobile device now. Or follow Speedsport on social. And be sure to subscribe to the Speedsport Daily. Speedsport is your one-stop shop for all things racing on two wheels and four. Falcon Tires is proud to be the official light truck tire of Progressive American Flat Track. Choosing the right tire for your truck or SUV is critical. And Falcon has you covered offering highway terrains to all terrains through torture-tested mud terrains. For more information on Falcon's full line of Wild Peak products, please visit us at www.falcontire.com. Kicker Performance Audio is the official sound system of American Flat Track. Kicker's fully stocked line of products includes speakers, amplifiers, and subwoofers for your car and truck stereo systems, as well as those for your boat, side-by-side, -side, and touring motorcycle. 
Kicker also makes Bluetooth outdoor speakers, over-ear headphones, and earbuds to pair with your favorite mobile device. To learn more or find a dealer, visit kicker.com. Rev up those taste buds with Mission Foods, a proud sponsor of AFT Super Twins Racing. Mission Foods has you covered with race day recipes that are too fast, too tasty. So grab your favorite Mission products, sit back, and enjoy America's original extreme sport. Klotz Synthetic Lubricants is proud to be the official lubricant of American Flat Track. Family owned and made in America since 1959, Klotz has built its reputation by answering the call of racers and performance enthusiasts who won't settle for anything less than superior synthetic lubricants. Racers and performance buffs around the world rely on Klotz to get them to the checkered flag. Order today at klotzlube.com. Tired of replacing your battery every year? It's time to buy the world's best lithium battery, the Pulse IPT. With up to 1,200 cranking amps and unmatched reliability, there's no better battery for your bike. Visit Full Spectrum Power in the paddock today or on Instagram, Facebook, and the web. Start something. Power everything. Solar Fit, America's solar team, is a proud sponsor of American Flat Track Racing. Get your complimentary solar analysis today at AmericanFlatTrack.com slash SolarFit and let the sun power your home or business for free. KTM, ready to race. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda is proud to sponsor the Al Lamb's Dallas Honda Singles Challenge. It's a winner-take-all $2,500 dash for cash. Enjoy the fastest and richest four laps in AFT singles racing. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda, DallasHonda.com. And welcome back to the Mission Sacramento Mile, powered by Law Tigers. Check a look at this. The coast, not too far away from here. Look at that beautiful shot from some drone footage from just earlier today. Looks like a lot of fun out there. We saw some seals earlier this morning in the Sacramento River. We're doing a little track maintenance right now, trying to get a little bit ahead of the ball game, adding as much moisture to the racetrack as we can. They started watering the racetrack actually on Monday, so it is very hot. It's been very hot all week long. We're over 100 degrees out right now. So the uh, street sweepers out there pushing the marbles off the racetrack, the Packers coming down the front straightaway, and they're wheel packing the racetrack in. So far, we have had one round of practice for the Super Twins. Fastest out there on the racetrack was the one of Jeremy's with a 4-0.378. We've also had one round of practice for the production twins. Jesse Janish, our points leader, was the quickest in the first round of practice, 4-0.982. And right now, that's the quickest on the track right now is this wheel packer. He's working the inside of the front straightaway. He's about to get past, though. Here comes the draft pass by the water truck on the front straightaway. He swings to the outside. New leader, the Motion Pro water truck, goes into the lead. 
No, honestly, we are taking our time right now watering the racetrack. Don't forget the legends are downstairs from 2.45 until 5.15. There are several of the greatest flat track racers in the world are downstairs signing autographs down there for you fans. Come on down there. Grab a program. Get it signed. If you want to take home some history, stop by the Rookies of 79. They also have uh, some banners made up for every uh, legend that is down there, and those are for sale. There's two legends for each of them. Some of the legends that are down there are down there to meet you, including the, what, the, let's see, the 13-time Sacramento Mile winner, Scotty Parker, is down there. We saw Ronnie Jones was headed down there earlier today. Smoking Joe Cop is going over there. And I believe Kristen Beat is caught up with Scotty Parker. Let's take a listen. Scotty Parker, the nine-time champion, 13 sack mile wins alone. Scotty, we know this track is about consistency. For you, what is the key to winning here? You know, I think it's really uh, being on a great motorcycle and being able to draft in and because it's got long straightaways, the corners are a little bit narrow, so you gotta you gotta really get uh, the bike. Get some corner speed, come off the corner with a great draft and, and get that guy, pass him before the start finish line, you're in. So we know Jared Mees is still at it right now because he wants to beat your record of nine championships. He's at seven right now. What advice do you have for him? Hey, good luck. You know, uh, I knew it would take him nine years to get the, to win nine championships, and he's given it one hell of a shot, you know, and uh, hats off. That's what records are made to be is to be broke. And, uh, and he's a, he, we call him, he's actually from Pennsylvania, but he's from Michigan and now Florida. And but, you're from Michigan too? Yeah, I mean, you, you know, we, we take him and we get rid of him every once in a while, you know, we, so we can push him around. Well, you're from Pennsylvania, but uh, it's great. We, you know, uh, it's just really great to, for the motorcycle guys out in here that are racing motorcycles today, uh, putting a great, great uh, show on for the fans and that. It's really, really cool. Thanks so much, Scotty. And enjoy the day. I know you always have fun when you come out here. Thank you. And it's warm and hot. <laughs> that was awesome, Kristen. Good job down there with the nine-time champ, Scotty Parker, the winner of the Sacramento Mile. Some 13 times he won here, and he said he made it sound easy. Like, all you have to do is beat the guy to the finish line. Well, there's a whole lot more to it. you got to be in the right position. It is a high-speed chess match. So, uh, again, doing some track maintenance right now. You see how dry it is. It's very warm out here at Sacramento, the capital city. We'll pack it in right now when the track's ready to go. Up next will be our Parts Limited AFT singles for their first round of practice. Some of them are actually staging up over there at the entrance to the racetrack. They will enter and exit the racetrack at the exact same spot. Uh, left of the start-finish line, left of the grid, right by the Vance and Hines tent. You can see the singles are already staging up right now. They will come out according to their point standings, and right now our points leader is the 12 of Cody Cop. That's the Red Bull KTM. The 13 will come out second. That's Morgan Missler. 79 Dalton Gauthier will come to the racetrack third. Trevor Bruner, who won here at the doubleheader last year, he was on a different brand of motorcycle this year. He switched on over to the Estenson Yamaha team. He will come out fourth on the 21. 18, Max Wells on the KTM. 48, Trent Lowe, the sleeper, is on the Honda. 106, Chase Setup. He's our Mobile View Rookie of the Year leader, and he's trying to wrap that up here real soon. He's up there in the, let's see, the sixth spot. Seventh spot in the points is Chase Setup. James Ott come out on the 19 bike and the 26 of Aiden Roos Evans he's really finding his own he's gaining a lot of speed he's feeling more comfortable we'll let a few laps here and there we're going to take one more break again the track maintenance is continuing right here at the legendary Sacramento Mile Mission Sac Mile powered by Law Tigers we'll be back hopefully practice will continue when we come back to Sacramento
this racetrack has turned out, AJ, it is incredible. They can run high, low, middle, anywhere they want. We're talking eight riders in contention for this right now. The final corner away. Look at the impact. Briar Bowman's going to have to use the track. Briar Bowman wins two years in a row here at Wayman's So I'm at your hands on the wheel, got a sexy touch It's enough to make me and my Chevy blush so long Take it all off the damn highway Turn me on, not let you drive, babe You can take it fast as you want to Girl, a little dirty looks damn good on you Start me up, stones on the radio Girl, I love, love it when you let go Don't waste your way in the wrong way Get out of those four by four play Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited, we support the sport. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com forward slash progressive to see how much you could save. Brought to you by Yamaha and its best-in-class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you too can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off-road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com. Mobile View has been providing state-of-the-art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. With over 300 World Championship titles, for 44 years, Olean's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports, for road or track, dirt or asphalt. When you choose Olean's products to elevate your performance, you get Olean's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. SNS Cycle was born from a passion for racing and has spent over 60 years building high performance for the power sports market. All the while, racing has remained at our core, from the Bonneville Salt Flats to championships in Progressive American Flat Track. SNS is the go to for high performance on and off the racetrack. Memphis Shades brings you a whole new level of style when it comes to motorcycle windshields and fairings. The quality, style, and selection set these products apart from the pack. Memphis Shades designs and builds all windshields, fairings, and hardware in-house. Raw materials in, finished goods out. Made in Memphis. Style that works. Dunlop is the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. We make tires in America for racing and street racing such as our credit-worthy Progressive American Flat Track Spec Racing Tire, the DT4, and the DT3, which is now the Street Legal K180. Learn more about Dunlop Tires at DunlopMotorcycleTires.com. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. darkness is full of demons hazy creatures who lurk in the shadows prowling under the cloak of dust but we're not demons we're beasts Weird. 
We're here at the State Capitol, Sacramento, California. It's the Mission Sacramento Mile, powered by Law Tigers. The folks just joining us here at the Cal Expo. We're doing a little track maintenance right now. We've had two groups of practice go out onto the racetrack. So far, we've seen Super Twins, their first round of practice, and we've seen Production Twins, their first round of practice. Up next, here in just a few moments, the single riders will be staging up. We'll bring out the Parts Limited AFT Singles, sponsored by Kicker, here at the Cal Expo. So they're doing a little track maintenance right here. Palm trees. They're a little hot out here. There are some yellow leaves on those palm trees. Singles up next. They're starting to roll up there into the staging area right now. They will come out according to the point standings. We're down to the final five races of the season here in 2022. The biggest differential between first and second in the point standings is our singles class. Cody Kopp is in front of Mishler and the rest of the gang. There's a look at the point standings coming in. Six wins for Cody Kopp here in his sophomore season on the factory Red Bull KTM. 243 points. He is, looks like 46 points ahead of Morgan Mishler, who has two wins on the season. Dalton Gauthier sitting right there, third in two wins on the season. Trevor Bruner in fourth with the 179 points. He has one win on the season. He's got the momentum coming in here to today. Max Wells moved up into fifth with 173 with a win. Trent Lowe back there sixth, and our Rookie of the Year leader, Chase Sadoff, the 106 Turner Racing Honda. He's seventh in the point standings. James Ott from Simi Valley, California. Aiden Rusev is making his way up the leaderboard. He's up to ninth in the point standings. Hunter Bauer, the Canadian champ up there in tenth with 74 points. That's your top ten in our Parts Unlimited AFT singles point standings. The bikes are staging up. They should be on the racetrack here real soon. There's one of the California riders, Terrence Santero, Team Money. They're telling us 30 seconds to be on the racetrack. Don't forget, last night we ran down there at the Lodi Cycle Bowl, the night before the big one up here at Sacramento. Chad Coast, the California kid, took the win. He'll be coming out here in group number two of the AFT singles class. Comes some more of the riders just pulling up there into staging 21. Trevor Bruner's pulling up right now. You can see they're using umbrellas. It's not because of that R word, but it's because of the sun. Trying to keep our riders as cool as possible. Actually, tell them to fire them up. They're putting their zippers up on their leathers, and they're going to start sending them out here in just a second. It's time to go back to work. Parts Unlimited AFT Singles, sponsored by Kicker Performance Audio. Kicker's down there. They have a booth set up. Stop by and see Lauren and the gang down there on the uh, asphalt area between the grandstands and the racetrack. And the bikes are moving onto the track. We appreciate everyone's patience in this track dialed in. Cody Kopp will lead them into turn number one. Top goes up to the middle of the racetrack. He says, I'm not going to try the bottom line just yet. The Super Twins and the Production Twins are at the very bottom of the racetrack, but now you see some of the riders drop into the bottom. So they all you know, take a look. They get up to full song about halfway down the back straightaway, getting up through the gearboxes to their gear that they're electing to run, probably fifth gear. Into turn number three, Cop is out front behind him. Looks like the 13 of Morgan Mishler. Cop looking back. We want to see who's coming. He's going to open up the door and let Mishler come on through on the 13 bike. They're going to have a, little, a few surprises in the Turner Racing Camp down there next weekend or two weeks from now when we go to the Springfield Mile. Cody Cop still learning on these mile racetracks. They don't get to race a lot of mile races as an amateur, and this is Cody Cop's second season. He'll duck in behind the 13 of Morgan Mishler. Maybe we want to see what he was going to be running today. Clock is started when they go across the start finish line. Big P, our flagman is down there, ready to see the riders come on back by. The assistant flagman is Raymond Rizzo from Motor Racing Outreach. They take care of the duties down there at the start finish line. Leaders in turn four. It's Morgan Mister getting in a little bit sideways. We see a roost coming off the back tires every now and again when the track kind of breaks away from them. It is so hot out here, trying to keep that track as moist as possible. Mishler across the start finish line. Cody Cobb goes across the start finish line. Dalton Gauthier to the top spot. Now Trent Lowe. Look at this at Trent Lowe with the 4-0.682. Sadoff is a 4-0.7. Everyone else is in the 41 second range. So Trent Lowe goes to work early on the 48. Mission Foods, Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas Honda. 48 bike fastest on the racetrack. He's using the double draft on the back straightaway. You can see from that shot right there, they kind of go up and down just a little bit down the back straightaway. It's far from flat. Trent Lowe's got a big group of riders right behind him. Looks like Trevor Bruner is right there behind him. Those two grew up racing together down there 
at Lawrenceburg Speedway. They're from Southern Indiana. Trent Lowe's actually pulling away from him right here on the front straight. Here comes another rider. Keep catching that double draft pass right there behind. It looks like Sadiff. Watch out. Almost gets into the back tire. Bruner, good job by the cameraman following that group of riders right there. That was a little bit too close for my comfort down there. And Sadoff to the top spot. The rookie. 40.574 chase sat up to the top spot. It's only practice, but I'm getting excited. I'm glad to see the bikes back on the track. Sat up at the top spot, the 106 fastest on the racetrack. Trent Lowe second. Cody Cobber points that are back there in third on the on the times right now. Again, it's only practice. Look at all the uh, super twins teams watching the big screen down here, watching how the racetrack is developing. 40.5 is actually faster than the production twins. Down the back straightaway. The leaders in turn three and four. There's a look back at James I, Simi Valley, California, on his KTM. He's trying to run the bottom of the racetrack right up against that inside berm, marking the inside of the racetrack. White flag is out for Mishler, Cop, Gautier, Trent Lowe, Sadoff. Trying to keep the draft down here on the front straightaway. Nobody's really using any draft passes just yet. They're kind of getting si single file. Looks like Cody Cop starting to track down the 13, though. We might see a draft pass on the back straightaway. That looks like the Honda's pulling away from the KTM on the back side. Mitchell the 13. Looks like he's got his top gun helmet back on. Top right there in second. They're still again running that inside berm on the inside of the corners. Coming off this final corner. Here they come to the checkered flag. Mitchell got a little bit sideways. Will Cop be able to make the draft pass? No, he won't. Checkered flag is out right there. Mitchell still the top spot right here. Leads him into the into the corner, but Mitchler on the speed charge is actually fifth. So if you're leading the group, doesn't necessarily mean you're the fastest bike on the racetrack. That belongs to the 106 of Chase Sadoff, a 40.574. Not too far off the Super Twins, actually, who had Mies with a 40.378. Take a look at this replay of Chase Sadoff, the 106, getting really sideways. Just using that left foot out there is kind of like a, you know, trying to, let it hang out there, not even putting it down, but he's got his hands full on that 106. That's the rooster. 106 Chase set off, searching for that Mobile View Rookie of the Year. Some extra money, 20, or sorry, 7,500 bucks up for grabs from winning that Rookie of the Year standings. They were told earlier in the riders meeting they do a practice start coming off of turn number four before they take it back to the pit area. So that's what they're going to stop and do right outside of turn number four. A little practice start, go back to the pits, and then up next will be group number two of your Parts Unlimited AFT singles class. Again, coming out according to their point standings. 24, Hunter Bauer. 80s, Brandon Kitchen on the Husqvarna. 113, Gage Smith, 49. The California kid, Chad Coast, 377, Ferran Carduz. Good to see him back after that wild get off last weekend at Castle Rock. 82, Travis Pett in the fourth. 63 is Jared Lowe, 94, Ryan Wells, 55, Tyler Raggio. Raggio on that first impressions race team out there will be his teammate, 94, Wells, the 49 of Chad Coast. There's three of the first impressions Hondas will be in this next group. And here comes the NKR. Canadian-based rider and team moving on to the racetrack. But Kitchen goes straight out front on the 80 bike. That is Brandon Kitchen. That's the Banton Hines Husk Varna. It's group number two. Again, they come out of coin to their point stands for you new race fans. There's a big group of riders down the back straight. A little bit different than that first group. They were all spread out but this one there's a humongous group going into turn number three one rider's trying the outside right away quick fast in a hurry says i'm not waiting around i'll get it try to get in line and use the draft on these long straightaways get right behind the rider you can suck the draft down the back side away swing up the inside or the outside make the pass kitchen's having nothing to do with that he's sneaking away here comes the 49 chad coast he didn't quite have enough to go past the rider right in front of him i believe that's ferran cardus the 377 
lights are on on the wheel and lights and they were just turned off they have that yellow light on for that entire get up to speed lap when they get by the start finish line they turn those yellow lights off the wheel and lights are all the way around the racetrack so these riders are aware of everything that's going on around them the 80 bike brandon kitchen starting to pull away that's the bk broiler he's stretching out the uh, cables on that husk barn and number 80. There he is at the start finish line. Ferran Cardus right behind him. The Vanilla Cycles Bullet Strong Racing Honda. Two riders get side by side. Here comes the 49. Chad Coast trying to sneak up the inside of the 377. Ferran Cardus making the pass in the middle of the corner. We usually don't see that on a mile racetrack. Usually the passes are made at the end of the straightaways. Coast again took the win last night, the Lodi Cycle Bowl. Here is the look back one week ago. Watch the 12 bike of Cody Cop going down. Ferran Cardus coming right there, has nowhere to go. Up and over the handlebars, somehow rides it out for quite a while, and then goes up and over the bars. And it's amazing that he's back here on the racetrack. I give a big nod to the new air suits that they are mandatory to wear. He bruised his uh, femur, his hip. And his knee's a little messed up, but he's out here racing with him. Got uh, cleared by the medical staff to go racing, and he's right now got back in front of the 49 Chad Coast. How tough are these riders out here? These guys are the toughest of the tough. Ron Cardus goes back by Chad Coast into turn number three. They're all chasing the 80 bike of Kitchen. Brandon Kitchen currently in the 10th spot. Ryan Wells right behind him on the 94. Ferran is in 13th. Chad Coast is in 15th of the 18 bikes that have taken time in this practice session. Looks like Chad Coast and Ferran are actually kind of going back and forth. It might be slowing them down a little bit. Usually two bikes go faster than one, but now Ferran slips off the groove just a little bit, if you want to call that a groove. No rubber's really down yet, right, right there in turn one. Kitchen's time checking out all by himself. He's got a quick time right now for him is a 4.1.531. About one full second off of Chase Sadoff on the number 106. Sadoff still looking for his first ever American flat track win. He was in the hunt for sure at Rapid City. He had a mechanical issue in that main event after he won the Al Ams Dallas Honda Challenge at Rapid City. White flag is out for the leaders. Here they come onto the uh, turn number one on the front straightaway into turn number one. White flag is out now for the entire field. Group number two. Parts Unlimited, AFT Singles, sponsored by Kicker. Singles means single cylinder motorcycles, 450 cc's. Kitchen downshifts just a little bit, one notch before going into turn number three. There's Chad Costa, 49, 377 Ferran Cardus from Spain. The company right behind them. It's like the 82 of Travis Petten. Checkered flag is out for Kitchen. Kitchen in 10th. Here comes Ferran. A nice draft pass right there. That's exactly what you want to do. Ferran currently 13th. Now make that 14th as Travis Petten goes on by. Takes that 13th spot away. There's group number two. Parts Unlimited AFT singles. One more group to go in the singles class. First round of practice. Then we'll the Super Twins will roll back onto the racetrack for their second round of practice. Singles and Production Twins get one round of practice today. Everybody will have two rounds of qualifying. We'll take the fastest lap from either of those two rounds to get qualified into their semifinals for tonight in all three classes. The open paddock area right now is still scheduled from 5 until 5.50. We'll keep you updated if that changes. Opening ceremonies at 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Opening ceremonies at 6. We'll be on the racetrack with our first qualifying semifinal at 6.15 p.m. Group three set to roll onto the racetrack. 91 will lead him out. Justin Jones, 175, Terrence Santero. 119, Logan McGrain. He's on a borrowed motorcycle this weekend riding a Honda. 132 is Bronson Pierce. He made his first ever AFT main event last weekend at Castle Rock. 195, Clayton Williams. 229, Noah Miller. 125, Jacob Cassio. And the 101, Grant Holmes. I believe he's the only Suzuki racing in the entire group of riders. Look at that. Chad Coast stops by to talk to his teammate, Justin Jones, real quick about what's going on, on the racetrack. That, I think, is the perfect, uh, perfect teammate. If you want to have somebody that's going to stop and tell you exactly what's going on, that's the kind of teammate I would look for. Group three, rolling out of the track. Justin Jones from 
Hauling New York will lead him out. He's trying to let everybody go on by. Nobody's trying to get up to speed. Look, they're having a slow contest getting going. But Grant says, I've got enough of that. Everybody else going as slow as they can. Like, nobody wants to go out there and lead. Now the one-on-one, -on -one, Grant Holmes pulls off the racetrack. As Suzuki pulled off the racetrack back into the infield, he'll go back to his dad back there. And these guys are slowly, I mean slowly, getting up to speed in turns one and two. I think somebody needs to crack the whip and say, let's go. None of those four guys want to get up to speed. <laughs> we got a slow race in turn number two. How about that? The leaders are already down here in three and four. And now the rest of them start cracking the throttle. Twisting it all the way back again. Yellow flags are out during this entire first lap to get up to speed. Next time by the green flag will come out and here they come. Leader off the of tournament four to the green flag. One twenty one Jacob Cassio across the start finish line. Here comes the one seventy five on the screen. Taryn Santero. He's out there with the two twenty nine Noah Miller. First round of practice, AFT singles. So far, quick time is still. Chase set up 4-0.574 for the number 106 bike. Ninety-one, Justin Jones on the screen from Holly, New York. First impression race team Honda bike. There's four of them on that team. Draft pass for the top spot, almost going into turn one. They like to get back in line. McGrain, the 119 up to 19th. And just as I say that, Justin Jones goes up to the 19th spot. McGrain is 20th. Santero goes up to 21st. Bronson Pierce is out there, the 132. He's 22nd, so the track's slowing down just a little bit. As the moisture will disappear every time. Uh, the bikes go out there and get a little bit drier. They'll do their best to keep the moisture in the racetrack. On the schedule next is Mission Super Twins. Their second round of practice is up next, but nobody's staged up just yet. But Grant across the start finish line, he's pulling one rider right along with him. Right behind him looks like the 195 of Clayton Williams. Williams currently in the 22nd spot. McGrain in 20th. Those are the leaders down the back straightaway. Williams makes the draft pass before they go into turn number three. McGrain will try to get in right behind him and try to keep that rider right in his sight so when they come up before, he can use the draft pass to hopefully make the pass before he get back to the start finish line. Again, don't forget the legends are downstairs signing autographs from 245 until 515 here today. Here's the lead duo across the start finish line. McGrain makes the pass right before the finish line. They might be practicing for a little bit later on. And the single, oh, McGrain almost threw it away in turn number one, got into a little bit of a dry spot right there, got a full lock. The handlebars were completely locked sideways for the 119, did an excellent job saving it. But it does, does lose touch with the leader down the backside. 195 Clayton Williams on the screen and the 119 Logan McGrain from Gap, Pennsylvania. Again, riding a borrowed motorcycle this weekend. Sat out last weekend with the Castle Rock uh, TT. Some riders do not like TTs and don't like jumping and don't like using those front brakes. So it's a, it takes a different breed. Look at Williams take the left hand off the handlebar. He'll put it down there behind the radiator shot, trying to get as small as he can. McGrain closes the gap. He's right on the back tire going into turn number one. This is where he got a little sideways right there last time to smooth through there this time. McGrain doing what he can to catch up to the 195. He's tracked him back down. But the hard part is not to pass him right here. You want to wait until you're a little bit further down the straightaway, like right about now. Pull out, go up the inside, and McGrain's doing exactly that. Nice draft pass going into turn number three. McGrain to the uh, front of the class right now is going to bring him off a tournament four. Checkered flag is going to fly this time by. Here comes Clayton Williams. He'll try to retaliate. And he's not able to make that pass. McGrain leads him to that start finish line once again. McGrain up there in the 21st spot on the number 119. 195 Clayton Williams is 22nd. Here's Jones, Cassio, Santero across the line. And the last bike just now across the start finish line. 132, Bronson Pierce. Again, made his first main event last weekend at the Castle Rock TT.
Super Twins start rolling into this staging area. Of course, these guys will be allowed to do a stop and do a practice start off of turn number four. Mission Super Twins is up next for their second round of practice. Super Twins get two rounds of practice. Everybody else just gets one, and everybody will get two rounds of qualifying. Here comes the number one bike just now rolling out of the pit area. The jammer, Jared Meese, coming to the spot right now. Super Twins up next. Meese has won here the last four times we've been out here in Sacramento. It's been the jammer, Jared Meese, as we look at the times from the first round of practice. Three Hondas is in the top three spots. Sadoff, Trent Lowe, Dalton Gauthier, Cody Kopp, the factory Red Bull KTM fourth. Morgan Mitchell, the other Turner Honda, is back there fifth. Brunner, sixth. Aiden Rusev is nice run so far from Aiden up to seventh. Max Whale, the factory Red Bull KTM at eighth. James Ott and Brandon Kitchen out there in that husk of Varner rounding out your top ten. Again, these riders are allowed to do that practice start off of turn number four. That way they don't tear up the starting spots over here. The grid is right here before the finish line. No front brakes, so it takes these guys a little bit of time to slow down. Super Twins are staged up, ready to go. The, they, again, will come out according to their points. Coming into this round with five rounds remaining. The one is Jared Meese. Look at Breyer sneaking out right in front of Jared. He said, I'm going to go first. Here goes the third three of Briar Bauman. The one, Jared Meese, 32. Dallas Daniels, 95. J.D. Beach, 20. Jared Vandekoy, 44. Is Brandon Robinson, 67. Davis Fisher, 25. Ben Lau. Fisher has an issue. He shuts it off. And now he reaches down. Now he gets it going. Looks like he pushed a button on the right side of the handlebars. Now he's getting out of the way. Letting everybody else go on through. 37, Bronson Bauman, 67. Fisher having an issue outside turn one. 52, Shayna Texter Bauman. 25, Ben Lau. 23, Jeffrey Carver on the XR 750, doing it for Dodge Brothers. In the 11, the California rider, that's Andrew Luker, who was on the box last night at the Lodi Cycle Bowl. Fisher still having trouble getting up to speed on that uh, exit of turn number two down the back straightaway. Something's going on with the 67 bike of Davis Fisher. Second round of practice for your Super Twins. Fisher still off the pace a little bit. Now he's trying to get up to speed. He's having an issue. So when he came out onto the racetrack, he put his hand up and started adjusting something on the right side of the handlebar. He's way at the back of the pack. There's actually some rubber going into turn number one way before they get into the corner. So there's rubber going down out here on the racetrack. As the moisture goes out of the racetrack, rubber will take to the racetrack. There's the three, Breyer, 95 JD, 32 Dallas Daniels are trying to run the bottom side. Dal Dallas gets in there really hot, goes up off the groove, up to the high line down there in turns number two. He actually did that to avoid hitting his teammate. On the back straightaway, Jared Meese on the one bike. Robinson with the quick time so far with the number 44, 40.620 for the 44. Keeping an eye on Meese. Robinson quickest so far. J.D. Beach second. Jared Meese, who's on the screen right here, is third quickest with a 4.1.135. Track will continue to change all evening long, starting out here in the heat of the day, going into the evening hours. Leaders on the front straightaway. There you go, Briar Bauman running the very bottom of the racetrack. Dallas Daniels has closed up on the, the three bike, the 32. Daniels up to second quick so far. Look at the roost coming off the back tires, some, some parts of the racetrack. Daniels with a 4.0.792. Watch the Yamaha down the back straightaway. He's gonna blast by the three, going into turn three. Caught the draft and then swung up the inside. 32 goes to the head of the class. Down there, turn number three. Yep, Briar's off the pace in turn number four. Two Essence and Yamahas on the front straightaway. 32, Dallas Daniels, 95, J.D. Beach. White flag is out. 
Beach up to second quick now. They four zero point seven six eight. Robinson still with a quick time out here in this second round of practice. The forty four bike four zero point six two zero. JD closes up on the back tire of the thirty two of Dallas Angels' his teammate. There is some rubber going down on the inside line all the way around the racetrack. There's a good shot of the rubber going down right here coming off a turn report when they're hard on the throttle. Checker flag is out, 32-95. The Estes and Yamahas, Daniels, J.D. Beach. Breyer behind him. Second round of practice for the Super Twins. Everybody else only gets one round of practice. Looks like the production twins are up next. Maybe some track maintenance will be up next as nobody's in the holding pin at this time. Taking a look at practice results. Practice group, practice round number two, Jared Meese. That's actually from the first round is faster than what we just saw Robinson. So that's the combined times. Oh, Meese goes faster right there on that last lap. That's my fault. Meese is at the top spot. At the last lap, the one bike goes to a 4-0.486. So the last lap, he goes by the 44. Robinson, who slides back to second. So Meese was fastest in the first round of 4-0.378. Fastest in the second round of practice, 4-0.486. J.D. Beach and his teammate Dallas Daniels, third and fourth, respectively. Briar Bauman, fifth. Six is Jared Vandekoy, seventh, Ben Lau, eighth, Davis Fisher, Harley Davidson's ninth and ninth and tenth, Bronson Bauman, Jeffrey Carver, XG and XR. It's your top ten. The bike's going back to the pit area right now, taking the bikes to the attention of the crew. And they're letting spectators go across the racetrack here at the start finish line. Again, the open paddock area for you spectators for the open. Fan walk is scheduled from 5 until 5.50. Opening ceremonies at 6 o'clock. The legends are signing autographs underneath the grandstands right now from 2.45 until 5.15 here at the legendary Sacramento Mile. You can also buy a banner from every one of the legends. They have two banners apiece. So if you, if you want to take home some history from a legend, you can get it signed right now. I would go down there as soon as you can, get it signed from those legends before uh, they exit the signing area. Lots going on down there below. There's several vendors. The American Flat Track Marketplace is out on the asphalt area between the grandstands and the racetrack towards turn number four. Stop by and see all the American Flat Tracker clothing company gear. The official t-shirts of the Sacramento Mile are underneath the grandstands. There is a booth out front as well. They got three different choices to choose from, three different colors, I should say. Ralph's already been down there. He's got a sack full of goodies. Ralph Shaheen's going to be celebrating his birthday next week. Local boy, local talent will be joining us here in a little bit. Ralph Shaheen, we'll bring him on in just a little while. Looks like we're gonna take another commercial break. When we come back, qualifying will start out here at the legendary Sacramento Mile. We'll be back to the capital city in just a few moments. Qualifying up next.
way this racetrack has turned out, AJ, is incredible. They can run high, low, middle, anywhere they want. We're talking eight riders in contention for this right now. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited, we support the sport. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com forward slash progressive to see how much you could save. Brought to you by Yamaha and its best-in-class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you too can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off-road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com. Mobile View has been providing state-of-the-art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. With over 300 World Championship titles, for 44 years, Olean's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports. For road or track, dirt or asphalt, when you choose Olean's products to elevate your performance, you get Olean's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. SNS Cycle was born from a passion for racing and has spent over 60 years building high performance for the power sports market. All the while, racing has remained at our core, from the Bonneville Salt Flats to championships in progressive American flat track. SNS is the go to for high performance on and off the racetrack. Memphis Shades brings you a whole new level of style when it comes to motorcycle windshields and fairings. The quality, style, and selection set these products apart from the pack. Memphis Shades designs and builds all windshields, fairings, and hardware in-house. Raw materials in, finished goods out. Made in Memphis. Style that works. Dunlop is the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. We make tires in America for racing and street racing such as our credit-worthy Progressive American Flat Track Spec Racing Tire, the DT4, and the DT3, which is now the Street Legal K180. Learn more about Dunlop Tires at DunlopMotorcycleTires.com. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. darkness is full of demons hazy creatures who lurk in the shadows prowling under the cloak of dust but we're not demons we're beasts
And hey, welcome back to the Mission Sacramento Mile, powered by Law Tigers. We got a little track maintenance going on. We'll try to put as much water on the racetrack as possible. It's a hot one out here this afternoon. So far, we've had two rounds of practice for your Super Twins. We have one round of practice for Production Twins and one round of practice for your AFT Singles. The bike should start rolling up to the staging area. Up next is the Mission Production Twins qualifying round number one. All of our riders today will get two rounds of qualifying. They have transponders on their motorcycles in the exact same spot on their fork tubes. When they go across the start finish line, the times will be recorded. We'll take the fastest lap from either round of qualifying that will get all of our riders into their semifinals today. Out of the semifinals, we'll take the top eight riders to the main event. That will be set the field for today's main events for the three classes. There's also two challenge races. There's a parts limited AFT singles Al Lambs Dallas Honda challenge. The top two from each of the semifinals will make it to that. There is also the Mission Super Twins Too Fast, Too Tasty challenge. The top two out of the Super Twins semifinals will make it into the challenge races. Extra money up for grabs. No points are involved in those two races, but it's four laps apiece for an extra paycheck out here today. Don't forget the Legends autograph session going on from 2.45 until 5.15. Underneath the grandstands, you can meet some of the best flat track racers ever. Underneath the grandstands. Again, the track maintenance is continuing out here today, trying to put as much moisture as we can. We're going to take another quick break, and we come back qualifying. Should be coming up next. Mission Production Twins will be up next right here at Sacramento. Speedsport has been America's motorsports authority since 1934. Get news, results, and commentary from the most connected experts in the business. Covering all forms of motorsports from flat track to NASCAR and everything in between. Bookmark Speedsport.com on your mobile device now or follow Speedsport on social. And be sure to subscribe to the Speedsport Daily. Speedsport is your one-stop shop for all things racing on two wheels and four. You own the job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable, unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people to do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. You don't take greatness for granted, and neither should your gear. We are Torch Eyewear, and we design sunglasses for protection, performance, and chasing your passion. For more information, visit our website at TorchEyewear.com and click on our free home try-on program. Al Lambs Dallas Honda is proud to sponsor the Al Lambs Dallas Honda Singles Challenge. It's a winner-take-all. $2,500 dash for cash. Enjoy the fastest and richest four laps in AFT singles racing. Al Lambs Dallas Honda, DallasHonda.com. Sideburn is the world's finest go fast turn left magazine. It is available to buy at Progressive AFT's trackside merchandise booths and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit SideburnMagazine.com. SNS Cycle was born from a passion for racing and has spent over 60 years building high performance for the power sports market. All the while, racing has remained at our core, from the Bonneville Salt Flats to championships in Progressive American Flat Track. SNS is the go to for high performance on and off the racetrack. Tired of replacing your battery every year? It's time to buy the world's best lithium battery, the Pulse IPT. With up to 1,200 cranking amps and unmatched reliability, there's no better battery for your bike. Visit Full Spectrum Power in the paddock today or on Instagram, Facebook, and the web. Start something. Power everything. Solar Fit, America's solar team, is a proud sponsor of American Flat Track Racing. Get your complimentary solar analysis today at AmericanFlatTrack.com slash SolarFit and let the sun power your home or business for free. SBS is your single source for brake parts and components. From pads to rotors, shoes, and other important parts covering motorcycles, scooters, motocross bikes, ATVs, and UTVs. We create the power to stop you so you can go ahead. Find the right parts for your bike at www.sbsbrakes.com. 
Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited, we support the sport. Sometimes you need to disconnect to really connect with what's important. The all-new 2022 Indian Chief. Get lost and found at the same time. Welcome back to the Mission Sacramento Mile, powered by Law Tigers. We are California dreaming out here. He's dreaming us at the ocean. Look at these birds kind of hanging out, having a good time. Production Twins up next for their first round of qualifying. We're switching gears into the Mission Production Twins, sponsored by Vance and Hines. Now we're back here at the Sacramento Mile, the Cal Expo. Home of Ralph Shaheen, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have him on board here in just a little bit. Production Twins will be rolling onto the racetrack for their qualifying one group of Production Twins will take the fastest lap out of round one or round number two to set the field for tonight's semifinals. 33, Jesse Janis going to lead him out. He is our points leader. Corey Texter right there, second on the one bike. 60s Nick Armstrong from Norco, California. He won the season opener at Volusia. Billy Ross with one win on the season. He'll come out fourth on the 109 Harley Davidson. The 10, Johnny Lewis on the Royal Infield. 34 is Cameron Smith. 15 is Mikey Rush. Rush took the win at the Black Hills uh, Rapid City half mile. 61, Casey Sisko on the Kawasaki. 47, Michael Hill on the Yamaha. 45, Shelby Miller on the KTM Super Duke 790. And the 50 by Jimmy McAllister from Petaluma, California on the Kawasaki 650. There they are, stage up, ready to go, keeping the sun off the riders as long as possible. It's awful warm to be in those leather suits, but they are mandatory out here at American Flat Track. The lenses are being locked down, and we're going to send them out. Got a message earlier today, Cam Smith, possibly on the smallest CC motorcycle out there in production twins. They're listening in back in New York, Jeremy Eichen in the game. Mike's rolling on the racetrack. Our two-time champ is going at the very end of the field, a la Brian Smith. That's what he always used to do. Janet Shaw front, the 33, Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson, XG750. We'll lead the group off of turn number two onto the back straightaway, tucked in and getting as small as you can to break the draft. A little bit more moisture on the racetrack. I expect it to be a little bit quicker maybe than the last time they were out there. Last time they were out there, there was at least a group or two ahead of them that already put some track time in. Here comes the 33, bringing them off of four onto the front straightaway here at the legendary Sacramento Mile. Janish across the start finish line right there on the speed shot. Mikey Rush sneaking to pick up the inside of the 60 bike there. They are side by side. Now they're getting them in, in line. Fastest slap of group or her session one or session two will get them qualified for today's show. Three riders down the back straight away. Up the inside comes the 15 bike right there into turn number three. Rush goes by the 60 of Armstrong. He's bringing with him somebody. He's coming up the inside with them. Take a look back through the field. 
45 Shelby Miller just going through the screen. Janish across the start finish line, the 33 XG 750 Harley Davidson. 41.281. They're just getting up to full speed. It's actually quite a bit slower than the last time they were out there. I was expecting to get a little bit faster since they are on a fresher racetrack. Maybe it'll take a lap or two to, for it to get back up to speed. There's the one, Corey Texter, the bear. Final season of American Flat Track on the one motorcycle. It's Janish at the top spot, 41.281. Here in qualifying, Corey Texter, 41.765. In the 10, Johnny Lewis having problems with the Royal Infield, coasting down the back straightaway. Now he looks like he's switching gears. Now he's trying to get through the gearbox and get back up to speed. So Lewis, something happening to the 10 bike. He's currently fifth quick, though. That's okay. He's got at least one good lap in there. There's Johnny Lewis onto the front straightaway, the Royal Infield. Still doing a lot of research and development to that motorcycle. They're working on the bike on Thursday night up at the Motion Pro warehouse, making some changes to that motorcycle, taking the uh, motor they used out last weekend, putting the mild motor in. There's Corey Texter, the one G and G Yamaha going into turn number three. Janish still at the top spot, 40.839. Now it's getting a little bit quicker. 40.8, it is faster than their first practice session, 40.839. Janish fast time in practice is a 4.0.982. Texter up to second, 4.1.731 right there on that lap. Just now goes a little quicker, 4.1.73 for Corey Texter. Mikey Rush sitting in third. Nick Armstrong is fourth. Billy Ross is now fifth, which slides Johnny Lewis down to sixth. White flag will come out next time by. Here's your leader bringing him off a of turn four onto the front side. White flag is out for Janish. There's Rush on the 15, Harley Davidson, Nick Armstrong on the 60. Take a look at Mikey Rush, the 15, again the winner at the Rapid City Half Mile. Black Hills Half Mile. They're in Rapid City, South Dakota. Goes on during the Sturgis Bike Week. And I think everybody in the pit area congratulated him when he came off the racetrack. Everybody's excited about that win. His first win since he was injured at the season finale last year in Charlotte. Rush has uh, Dave Atherton as the crew chief on that 15 bike. Checkered flag is out for Janish. Here comes Rush back there. Second place on the racetrack and also second on in qualifying so far. 4-0.839 will be good enough for Janish to have the pole right now in this first round. Again, two rounds of qualifying. Corey Texter coasting down the front straightaway off the pace. Janish on the cool down lap down the back straightaway. There goes Corey Texter already in the pit area, so he did not even make it to that checkered flag. He is still third quick though. Corey Texter with a 4-1.731, the two-time production twins champion. Janish has the quick time with the 4-0.839 here in our first round of qualifying for your production twins. So Harley Davidson's first and second, both of them on XG 750s. Janish, Mikey Rush, third is Corey Texter with the 4-1.731. Nick Armstrong, another Yamaha, so Yamaha's third and fourth. Armstrong in fourth. Billy Ross from Flint, Michigan up there in fifth. Johnny Lewis to Royal Infield. Casey Sisko on the Kawasaki. Two more Yamahas and then a KTM. So look at all those different brands here in production twins. Harley Davidson, Yamaha, Royal Infield, Kawasaki, and KTM all in the top ten for our first round of qualifying for your production twins. AFT singles already staged up and ready to go for their first round of qualifying. And coming out according to their point standings, the 12 will lead them out. Cody Kopp. Maxwell says, hey, I need some help. He's uh, going to take his 18 bike back to the pit area. So Maxwell, go, he's actually doing a stand-up through the infield. He's going to get a different motorcycle. I hope his team is ready for him. Here comes Max, going to go to his pits. Again, his teammate will lead him out to 12. Cody Cop, 13. Morgan Mister, 79. Dalton Gautier, 21. Trevor Bruner won here two times in a row. 
last year. 18, Max Well. Looks like he went to the pits. Now he's coming back on his motorcycle. 48, Trent Lowe. 106, Chase Sadup was fastest in practice. He's in his rookie season. 19 is James Ott. 26, Aiden Rusevens. Three groups of AFT singles. Their first round of qualifying. The bikes are staging up right now, getting some things taken care of in the infield. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, AFT Singles, their first round of qualifying, coming up next right here at the legendary Sacramento Mile. We'll be back. Sometimes you need to disconnect to really connect with what's important. The all-new 2022 Indian Chief. Get lost and found at the same time. Everything we do at the track shapes what we build for the street and the dirt. You can see how bad these guys want it. A race to the line. For us, racing is not for the trophies or the glory. We compete because it makes everything we do faster, more durable, and tested to a higher standard. For SNS, racing is the ultimate in proven performance, and we've been proving it since 1958. Speedsport has been America's motorsports authority since 1934. Get news, results, and commentary from the most connected experts in the business. Covering all forms of motorsports from flat track to NASCAR and everything in between. Bookmark Speedsport.com on your mobile device now. Or follow Speedsport on social. And be sure to subscribe to the Speedsport Daily. Speedsport is your one-stop shop for all things racing on two wheels and four. The loyal riders. riders, let your queries be known. Yeah, hi. Instead of letting passengers wrap their arms around us, can we put little handles on our jackets? Deny. Imagine. I want a new nickname. Can you guys start calling me Snake? No, Brian. Denied. How about we all get close to see if we can save with America's number one motorcycle insurer? Approved. Cool. Hey, if Brian's not going to be Snake, can I be Snake? No. no.
Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com forward slash progressive to see how much you could save. The rookies of 79 are former racers and champions of the sport who reunited in 2009 to form the official charity for American Flat Track. Ten years and over $1.7 million raised for our injured racers. Visit Rookies79.com to see how you can help. In the next 24 hours, over 1,000 teens will attempt suicide in our community. The fear and stigma surrounding suicide should not be a barrier to seeking help. Suicide prevention is not a spectator sport. Get informed, get involved, and save a life. For more information, visit racetostopsuicide.com. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda is proud to sponsor the Al Lamb's Dallas Honda Singles Challenge. It's a winner-take-all, $2,500 dash for cash. Enjoy the fastest and richest four laps in AFT singles racing. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda, dallashonda.com. Dunlop is proud to be the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. What we learn from racing is rolled into our production tires, such as the Dunlop K180, a street-legal version of the aggressive DT3 flat track tire. With the K180, street riders can now have the authentic flat track tire experience. No other tire company has won more American motorcycle championships than Dunlop. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. Johnny Lewis, uh, American flat track racer, but also I run the Roy Field Slide School. Having Senna as a product that I use to kind of get the information to somebody quickly. You know, I'm able to communicate with them directly. So they can see it right in that moment. You're picking the throttle too soon. Go faster down the straightaway. Work with Senna has allowed me to help make people faster, but also safer on the motorcycle. Saturday, September 3rd, and Sunday, September 4th, American Flat Track invades the Illinois State Fairgrounds for the granddaddy of them all, the legendary Springfield Mile. Labor Day weekend, witness the spectacle of America's top riders competing for fortune and glory at top speeds of over 140 miles per hour. Don't miss the Mission Foods Progressive Triple Crown Springfield Mile, presented by Drag Specialties. Get your tickets now at springfield-mile.com. If you haven't yet downloaded the Progressive American Flat Track app, do so. You can keep track of all of the timing, keep track of results, standings. You can also watch Progressive American Flat Track live on your smartphone, on your tablet. But we're back out here at the capital of California. It's the Sacramento Mile. I'm Scotty Dubler up here in the booth. Are you ready to come and work? This guy's ready to work. Come on, baby. Let's he is the legend. I don't, I don't even need to introduce you. Oh, Ladies geez. and gentlemen, welcome to the booth, Ralph Shaheen. Thank you, Scotty. Happy birthday, brother. Hey, happy birthday to you. Okay, man. I appreciate couple, that. A couple days away. Yeah, Tuesday. I'm, mine's yep. a little younger than yours. We're just a couple blocks from where you grew up, right Straight down that down road. Straight down Arden Way, all the way down Cross Phoenix Boulevard to hey. hang a left on Carmelo Drive and right there, about and halfway you, down you on the road. You called your first motorcycle race right here, is that no, correct? No, no, no. I, oh, called, my I, I so. called my first motorcycle race at what was then Sears Point. Okay. Um, American Federation of Motorcyclists, but... I did do quite a few uh -huh. races. Oh, there we go. Look There's the birthday we, trio. We celebrated earlier. So that's Ralph on the left. That's our uh, one of the guys that runs the truck down there. That's Zach, and his birthday is actually today. Yours is a couple days, and mine was yesterday. But uh, Chris Bead and some other folks chipped in, brought us some cake and some cupcakes, and so we celebrated earlier. Which one of us do you think looks the youngest? Me? Yeah, yeah. right. I do. Zach is the youngest. Zach he's, is he's the youngest, got, but I don't think he looks it. Do you? I think it's me. I, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Okay, Speaking so that's of the Ralph Shaheen. I'm Scotty Dubler. Let's check in down there in the infield. Krista Beek, thanks for the cake and the cupcakes. Absolutely. Well, you know, when birthdays come around, I never forget them. So uh, we got to celebrate big time. And uh, as you can tell, the guys, I was just looking at the screen with the birthday cakes and the cupcakes. I do love birthdays, so we had to celebrate big. Happy birthday, Scotty and Ralph. You guys are my friends, my heroes. Love listening to you. Turning to my right, I'm being told by the voice. Turning a little bit left. <laughs> a little bit yeah. left. Hey, guys. There you are. <laughs> we see you. I'm actually, uh, I got Brian Smith down here. So if we're going to do this mic test, we might as well hear from the man in the know. 104 down here. I just checked on my phone. 104 degrees. Have you ever raced in temperatures like this before, Brian? Back in the day, back in the 20s when you were on a bike? Yeah, we actually raced here once um, a couple times I wanted. It was real hot, but not this hot. And we were complaining when it was like 95. Uh, as you can see, it's making the track very challenging and complicated to try to prep it. One time we did race in Arizona, I think it was 106, and uh, same problem. The track, you can't put enough moisture in it, and it's uh, really hard to produce a great track. But AFT and the track crew here with uh, SDI is working, working their butt off to do what they can for all the riders. You've won here seven times. Your good friend Scotty Parker has won here 13 times. <laughs> I got to talk to him a little earlier and I asked him what the secret to winning he here is. In your opinion, what is your secret to winning here? Uh, well, everything that I'm gonna say is out the window for the track today, but um, you know, in the past, it's uh, really, it's actually the same same story. The, the corners are pretty tight for how long them straightaways are and how fast you get going and uh, there's really narrow groove going into the corner. So you gotta be brave to get in there really fast on that narrow groove, but very precise to where you don't miss that little groove. You said with the way the track is trending today, that all may go out the window. What way is the track trending and how will that present a new challenge to riders who maybe become accustomed with the old Sacramento? Well, normally uh, by now we got a pretty wide groove out there in the corners and you can really uh, use a lot of throttle. Now it's, uh, as you can see, getting dusty and breaking apart in the corners and the grooves are very narrow and uh, gonna make it more technical, honestly. You gotta jump through them holes and get on the gas when there's traction and then let off when there's not. When a track does start breaking apart, what does that do to the racing and how do riders have to maybe work around those sections? Uh, you gotta be very precise. It, it makes it technical where there's one spot where there's really good traction where you'll see that blue groove and then another spot right in front of it that's uh, marbles and dry slick. So you gotta be really hard on the throttle when you can and let off when it's uh, marbles. It sounds like there's a lot of throttle control uh, going on out there, Scotty. It, it's definitely going to be challenging out there, and I think, you know, sometimes you almost have to go slow to go fast. you got to keep it right there on that groove that come, develops into the corner. They were laying rubber down going into the corner, but then right at the very entrance of the corner, there wasn't any, and then you, it just kind of goes rubber, non-rubber, rubber. So you have to be really smooth with that throttle. Get on the gas when you can. Brian Smith knows more than anybody of how hard that is to do, and, and I talked to him earlier today, and, and I said, what was your secret? And he told me a little bit more than that, too, Chris, and it's about hitting your mark lap after lap so consistency being you know knowing when to let off the throttle knowing when to get back on the throttle like he just mentioned so uh and he definitely knows because brian smith went on here seven years in a row from 2011 all the way up to 2017 on indians and on kawasaki's he's so tough out here on the kawasaki you know scotty i'm thinking about this like brian said it's going to change a little bit as to what you got to do to win here today this is going to sound silly i know but i think you have to stay cool calm and collected he you know, because this is going to be a mental race here today. It's going to be physical, but as we get into the night, it, it is going to cool down a little bit because the heat of the sun will go away. The track is still going to be very, very challenging. And the guy or gal who can keep their head together tonight and be very, very patient. You have to be courageous going into the corner, but you're going to have to be very patient working your way through the corners. And, and getting down and staying on that groove right. right there. If you slip off that groove, you're going to go, you're going to lose probably five positions. Right. It, it doesn't matter which class either. No, no, absolutely. And, and so that's, I mean, you're going to really have to find a way to work that throttle and that brake. And you can see right there, that's the inner berm. They've, they've, you know, scraped off a lot of loose dirt. That's the inside of the racetrack. So they've scraped that off to the inside. So they have to run around the outside of that berm right there that we're looking at around that progressive banner. But you, you'll try to keep it as close to that inner you know ber dirt berm as you can the shortest way around might be the fastest here tonight and if there's any more rubber that goes a little bit higher maybe they'll go a little bit wider but right now could, again dealing with this heat over 100 degrees for i don't know how many days in a row it's it's been hot out here they've put as much moisture as they can they continue to put moisture down on this racetrack uh, they are checking on some uh, some crew members down there that might have overheated right now that's what this little break is so our recommendation to you folks in the stands and for you folks in the pit area drink as much water as you can absolutely. stay hot stay hydrated absolutely
out here at this legendary racetrack. Up next is singles qualifying. All right, we got a question coming in from the truck. So, so the question is, uh, Ralph, you've been coming here for a long, long time. Races. You grew up here. What is the race that stands out? What's your favorite race from right here at this uh, legendary racetrack? You know, I think what stands out to me was not necessarily a finish, but just in the middle of a main event one year here, I was standing down on the inside of one and two. This is when they used to have the, the fencing. The guardrail the on guard the inside. The guardrail yeah. on the inside. And Steve Moorhead, who's here working with us today like mm -hmm. a race director, was racing on his number 42. Right. Came flying down into the corners, and I watched Steve lean that bike all the way over. He, he got a little bit off the groove and started to slip up a little bit. And he was basically standing up as the bike was leaning completely sideways. And I watched him drag that left handle side of the handlebar across the dirt. He never lifted and he just pulled that bike right back up, back into the throttle and kept going. It was just remarkable control. You, you only see that every once in a while. I've seen Sammy Halbert do that before, I think at the Sturgis half mile, you know, back in the day, a non-grand national race. But uh, yeah, if you can lay the bike over, you know, typically that happens on a short track. You can see him bury, bury the handlebar, yeah. and actually drag it in the, in the dirt, but on a mile on race a track, mile. that's incredible. It was, and, and that's why Steve is one of the greats. That's, that's a very true statement. He won 23 grand nationals in his career. The Finley Flyer, number 42. Speaking of greats, Ralph, did you ever watch the man himself, Ricky Graham, tear it up out here at this racetrack? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky was something else. Incredible. Yeah, you know, him and uh, Bubba Schobert and Ronnie Jones and the guys with the Hondas back in the day. That's, mm -hmm. boy, it was a lot of fun. That's when we were running the mile here twice a year uh, in usually May and October. And uh, it'd be nice and cool back well. then. <laughs> <laughs> you got a guest trying to track you down oh, over here, Ralph. Watch out, it's on your shirt. We got a guest Jeez, up here in the booth. Did you get him? It's, no, he just wanted to hit you. Yeah, That's the California black plate rider. It's Tony Myring. He's won the Tony's California State like Championship in the pro class eight times up here. Step, you want to see what's going on in the booth? Speaking of the Finley Flyer, that's him right there. No, it's Brian Smith, the other 42. The other 42 who does a pretty good job out here racing. One out of Michigan and one out of Ohio, right? Exactly. It's like some of the... Uh, Crew chiefs are moving around just a little bit. That's a cool tattoo. I hear some bikes firing up down there in the pit area. It's time to get back on the racetrack. Up next, Parts Unlimited AFT single sponsored by Kicker. It's time for qualifying. The bikes fire back up. We apologize for that little delay right there. Had to take care of a crew member that was kind of overheating down there in the pit. So uh, singles will be coming to the racetrack next. It will be time for their qualifying action. And we'll take the best lap from any of these riders in this round or the next round to get qualified in today's event. Here they come, the 12, Cody Cop, 13, Morgan Mischler, 79, Dalton Gauthier, 21, Trevor Bruner, 18, Maxwell, 48, Trent Lowe, 106, Chase Setoff, 19, James Ott, the 26, Aiden Roos Evans. Singles on the racetrack down the back straight where the clocks will start the next time by they come across the start finish line the clocks will be going there's a transponder loop underneath the racetrack big p will show them the green flag qualifying about to begin here for your parts limited aft singles class they're up to full song on the front straightaway and taking a look at this onboard footage right here at the Sacramento Mile. Looks like we're on board one of the Turner Hondas right behind him. Here comes the 12. Cody Cobb, you can see that dirt banking on the inside. You got to keep it low as you can. And then get on the gas down the back straightaway. This is some great onboard footage from, I believe that's Maury Mishler's Turner Racing American Honda into turn number three. You see a, a few braking areas right there where the track breaks up just a little bit. You try to navigate through there. Now we use that Insta360 camera to switch around to the front side. City break, Cortec on the sp sponsor list. He slides all the way back, puts his rear end up onto the rear end of that fender to try to get as low as he can. This is some great onboard footage right here. Taking a look back, that's Cody Cop right behind him. 
This is good stuff right here. We'll go back onto the regular cameras. There's the 12 Cody Cop behind him. 18 and Max Well, Every once in a while, you can see the rear wheels step out just a little bit. It's when they find a loose spot on the racetrack. The dirt will fly off the rear fenders. We're taking a look at the 13 of Morgan Mishler. Right now, sat up still at the top spot. 2, uh, 4, 1.760. He was also fastest in the first round of practice. This is the second time out for these riders. The track slowing down just a little bit. It'll hopefully get faster again when the sun sets and the uh, moisture will come up. There's a lot of rubber right here coming up for turn number four. On to the front straightaway. The 21 of Bruner going up the inside of Gautier. They're sat off the 106 again. Quick, quickest so far out here in qualifying. They go up the racetrack just a little bit. Turns one and two. There's Cop on the 12. Maxwell in the 18. There is Sadoff on the 106 right behind Cody Cop. These two grew up and went through the ranks together. It's just about one second off for Super Twins. Also, yeah, 41.76 of the quick time in Super Twins of 40.48. So just a little bit off. They were really close after that first round of practice, but the track will continue to make the changes, and so will the bikes, and so will the teams. We'll see some faster laps, I think, later on. Bruner is out in front into turn number one, taking a look back through the field. Cop now goes to the top spot. 4-1.649 slide. Sat off back to second here in our first round of qualifying for your singles class. It's interesting to me that nobody's really working with anybody to do any drafting. So I think they're more going out there to race the track right now. When the racing action will begin, we'll see more of that drafting on the straightaways for sure. But right now, everybody's kind of single file, trying to keep it all in line. We don't see very many passing opportunities so far here in this qualifying session. 21, Bruner, 79, Gautier, the 12 of Cody Cobb. Here comes the draft pass. Up the inside goes Gautier as they take the white flag into turn one. Gautier to the top spot now right here on the racetrack. Cop is still the fastest in that last lap. It was a 4-1.820, so Cody Cop's quickest lap is a 4-1.649. Sadoff was second. He drops back to third as Mishler slid his Honda up there to second, a 4-1.689. Last time by, Mishler's getting a little bit quicker. Sadoff now third. Trent Lowe is fourth. Gautier is fifth. Brunner sixth. Maxwell seventh. James on eighth, Aiden Roos sevens in ninth. Aiden's way back to the back, working by himself. Way away from everybody else. These two guys working uh, together, coming to the finish line. Checkered flags out as they fan out across the start finish line. Bruner goes on by, and Bruner's gonna go up a little bit quicker. Bruner goes up to sixth. Sadoff goes to the top spot on that last lap of 4-1.392 for the rookie. The 106 goes to the head of the class once again. He was quickest in practice. Chase sat off the rooster. 4-1.392 for that rookie on that 106 Turner Honda. 4-1.392 for Chase sat off from Hillsboro, Illinois on the Turner Racing American Honda. Qualifying round number one. So we just got a little update from competition up here that they are going to take the fan walk out from right now. It'll be at the end of the night. You're more than welcome to go to the pits when we get done racing tonight. There's a look at our first round. 4-1.392 for Chase Sadoff. The other youngster in his sophomore season, Cody Kopp, up there second. 4-1.649. Morgan Mishler is third. Trent Lowe is fourth. Dalton Gautier is fifth. Trevor Bruner on the Yamaha up to sixth. He won here both times last year on that uh, 21 bike. He was on a Honda last year. He's on a Yamaha this year. Max Whale back in seventh. James Ott, Bruce Evans. Those are the nine bikes who have taken time so far. Up next is group number two. The 24 Hunter Bauer will lead him out. Hunter Bauer on the NKR uh, KTM team. 80s Brandon Kitchen. 113 Gage Smith. 49 Chad Coase who won the Lodi Cycle Bowl last night. An open pro class. 377 Ferran Carduce, the Spanish flat track champ. 82 Travis Pett and 63 is the Jet Jared Lowe. 94 is Ryan Wells and the 55. That's Little Hef. Tyler Raggio on the 55 bike. Here they come. Group number two, AFT singles on the racetrack. This is qualifying around number one. Now the back straightaway, just getting up to full song. They're side by side though. A little bit deeper in the field. Kitchen, Coase, Bauer. 377 Fron Carduce goes by Gage Smith right there, about fifth on the racetrack. But again, they're not racing against each other right now. They're racing against the stopwatch, the clock. 
I'm gonna go across the start finish line right now. It will start. This is qualifying round one for your parts limit today. FT singles. Chad Coast right behind Kitchen going into turn number one. And Brian, like Brian Smith said, you gotta kind of be smart about it. Get through the bumps, get on the gas when you can, when you're not up and down off of the ground there's a and i'm not saying the bumps are that bad but you know you want to have the throttle control put the power down when you can ralph got to have your patience tonight definitely so and the track will go through several changes i think it's going to get faster when when the sun sets oh for sure kitchen bringing him off the turn four right behind him is the 49 of chad coast in hot pursuit of the leader if he can stay close right there that will help him pull him along it might be a quick lap for the 49 Chad Coase on the 49 bike goes up to second. Kitchen goes to the top spot. That was a quick lap. So the 49 and the 80 bike kind of work together, and the 80 bike slips off the groove in turn number two. But they go to the top two spots. Brandon Kitchen now, your quick time at 41.342. So Sadoff is no longer your fast time. Right now it's Brandon Kitchen, 41.342. Chad Coase was closing in on him on that front straightaway. And he is up to second as there is some rubber down on several different parts of the racetrack, but it's it's different in different parts of the racetrack. So Kitchen slipped off the groove in turn number two. He's catching back up to the leader down here on the front straightaway. 49 Chad Coast from Fremont, California. Kitchen from Michigan on the number 80 Husqvarna. And, and Kitchen slips off the groove once again. This time it's right in between turns one and two. And a rider right behind him does the exact same thing. There is Kitchen on the uh, black and white. Husqvarna rides for Vance and Hines. So Chad Coe's starting to stretch it out just a little bit now as Kitchen slipped up a couple of times in one and two. So Kitchen might need to listen to Brian Smith and try to go slow to go fast. And you got to keep it on that groove. And it's hard to do. These riders want to go fast all the time. I don't blame them. Chad Coe brings him off the turn four. And there's Kitchen on the screen. Kitchen. And look, we've been off the miles since May. Very good point. Right. We've been on a lot of half miles and two TTs. Half miles, short tracks and TTs. So I'm sure these guys were all jonesing to get going and really twist that wrist and, and air it out, if you will, here on the mile. And now they're being forced to ride it a lot more conservatively. Like Ricky Bob said, I just want to go fast. Right. Hold it wide open, but you can't do it on the track tonight. You got to be really smart with that throttle. Throttle control is going to be key. Keeping it down on the groove, getting on the gas as quickly as you can and keeping those wheels in line. The 80 bike on the screen right here. Kitchen still fastest in qualifying, a 4.1.342. And I think it was actually to the advantage of Chad Coase when he was behind him. That was some of his quickest laps as the white flag is out. Coase still in second, 4.1.359. Gautier now slides back to 11th. He was in that uh, first group. He slid back to the 11th position. Kopp has slid down to fifth as Ryan Wells take the first impressions Honda team up to fourth. So Chad Coast and Ryan Wells both on the first impression Honda team. They are now currently second and fourth. Looking pretty good. It's got to feel really good. There are four riders on that team. Justin Jones being in that next group. Tyler Raggio is also out there on the 55 bike. He's in eighth right now. Checkered flag is out right now. Here comes the 49. Chad Coast. Kitchen right behind him. Patton, Ferran Cardus, Jared Lowe. The Jet Jared Lowe currently 14th quickest. Hunter Bauer is 15th. Gage Smith, the uh, other rookie of uh, candidate going for rookie of the year, is back there 16th. James Ott slides back to 17th. Roos Evans is 18th. A lot of different things do happen during practice and qualifying. We were talking to Kristen Bede, and, and she's going to talk more about it. But tires are a huge, huge story tonight. We'll keep an eye on the tire and the tire wear. And she, you know, Kristen's going to go get some more scoop on those tire conditions. Yeah, and this tends to be a little bit of a gritty mile, right? Yeah, there's a little bit of sand out there. So the sand is real abrasive. It's like sliding across some sandpaper, you know, and it, right. will, it will eat up those tires. So sometimes throttle control will actually play a factor in that. So we'll see how that helps, uh, you know, develop through the night. It's like Jesse Janish helping out with the uh, umbrella there tonight. So he's the umbrella girl? Well. Yeah. It's his birthday today. Jesse's? Jesse Janish's birthday, yep. Corey Texter is two days older. His birthday was actually on Thursday. Uh, you know who else I saw his birthday this today? Man, everybody's. Robert Plant. Really? Today? Yeah, today. Nice. Robert Plant's way before my time. Oh, boy. <laughs> Gotta give Ralph a hard time, you know. 
Singles pulling in. Up next will be group number three. So far, the quick time is Brandon Kitchen, 41.342. 41.342 for Kitchen. Here comes group number three, 91, Justin Jones, 185, Terrence Santero, 119, Logan McGrain, 132 is Bronson Pierce, 195 is Clayton Williams, 229, Noah Miller, 121, Jacob Cassio, and the 101, Suzuki. That is Grant Holmes. Grant actually pulled off the racetrack before he never even got, he hasn't had a lap out there on the racetrack just yet. So, Actually, I don't even see him out there as well, so maybe he's having an issue with his Suzuki. Up there he is. It looks like Grant is out there in the fifth position. That's my fault right there. He's supposed to be at the back, but he's up there fifth going into turn number three. They come out according to the points thing. Some of these riders haven't raced with us or haven't made main events yet this season, so they're coming out this third group. There's the 132, Bronson Pierce. There goes the one-on-one -on -one Suzuki just going on by. And congratulations to Bronson Pierce making his first American Flat Track main event last weekend at the Castle Rock TT. There's 175 on the screen. Slipping off the groove and turns one and two. That's T-Money. Terrence Santero slipping wide. Opens up the door for Logan McGrain, the kid. On a borrowed motorcycle, the, uh, the team elected to stay at home, and they flew Logan McGrain out here. He's got a ride on a Honda. Goes a little bit deeper than Santero into turn number three. Now the hard part's keeping it on the groove, keeping the two wheels in line, getting on the throttle right about here. They'll start laying the throttle down, keeping it right there on that blue groove. Now you can see all the rubber coming off of four. It gets really wide coming off of four, but you need to keep on the on that rubber. Santero's trying to look up the outside. Now he backs up and gets in line, so he didn't like the outside line going into turn number one. It'd be a little bit harder to slow down. It's still Kitchen at the top spot, 4-1.342. Riders on the screen is McGrain on the 119. Behind him, 175, Terrence Santero. McGrain back there 22nd right now so far, the bikes that have taken time. So just because you're in the lead on the racetrack doesn't mean you have a fast lap going. They're racing against the stopwatch, not against each other. There goes one rider going really wide. It's the 195 of Clayton Williams slipping wide down there in three and four. It's going to cost him about five spots on the track, and now he gets back in line, but he has definitely lost the lead, leader's draft. McGrain thinks about going up the inside, gets back in line, so it's Santero on the 175. McGrain, Grant Holmes is taking Suzuki through the field. He's up to third. He's also 20th quickest on the stopwatch, though. Grant Holmes, the only Suzuki racing with us this weekend at 42.983. About a second and a half off of Brandon Kitchen's time. A special delivery, Ralph. Got some ice cold waters up here to the booth. Appreciate it. It's nice and warm out there, but stay hydrated outside. Kitchen still at the stop, top spot, 41.342. Chad Coe second, Sadoff third. Wells is fourth. Cody Kopp is fifth. Look at this big group of riders fanning out across turn number four, across that start finish line. You got to stay in line as long as you can, and that's hard to do too. When you come off that corner and you catch that rider in front of you, sometimes you have to maybe crack the throttle a little bit and get your momentum and then swing out and make that pass. But it's hard to do. Sometimes, you know, when you're right on the rear end of the guy in front of you, you want to make that pass coming off the corner. It's better to wait until you get further down the straightaway before you pull out and make that pass. Here comes Grant Holmes looking up the inside way lower than anybody else and takes the Suzuki to the top spot. The 101 takes a double draft pass into the top spot onto the racetrack. The 101 currently 21st quickest, but he is in the lead now. It's got to feel pretty good, Ralph. Boy, he pitched that thing into three at the very last second, didn't and, he? And he went in so low, that's kind of what he had to do to get that thing slowed down to stay on the groove. That was an excellent job. What did that lap to do his tongue? Oh, watch out. Man, a little twitch right there by all three of them. Grant Holmes, the last lap. That was his fastest lap before 2.579. So, again, the double trap down the back straightaway carried that extra momentum down the backside. Let's see what he, what he can do here now with everybody chasing him. I don't think he's going to be able to hold on to that spot. I, I don't know. Santero's looking around the outside, so Santero gets by McGrain, will slide in right behind him. But if, if they can work together and stay in line as long as they can, this should be a quick lap for them as well. But they are, you know, the, the guys behind them are kind of pulling the leaders down just a little bit, slowing them down. But here they come. Grant Holmes will lead these four riders. Coming to the checkered flag here in qualifying. Up the inside comes Santero. That should be a really good lap for Santero. 
Watch out, Justin Jones. Oh, man, almost got into the back tire of the guy in front of you. So your, your, your instinct is to let off the throttle when you take that checker flag. You should leave it on until you get through one and two be before you check up on that throttle. But uh, Jones did catch that draft coming to the checker flag, moved up to the 19th spot with a 4-2.555. Santero, his last lap was as fast as two with a 4-2.750. So they're back there, 19th, 20th, 21st, those four riders right there, Ralph. That's so good. They were working together, kind of, yeah. sort of, you know, working on some drafting skills. I mean, some of these guys don't have much mile experience. No, but it'll help you if you can use that other guy. Yeah, and, you know, they've always said two bikes go faster than one if they can work together and not mix it up. But if they can stay in line, two bikes definitely yeah. go faster than one. Yeah. Up next, it looks like the Premier Class is already staged up and getting ready to go for qualifying round number one. As we take a look back at the results from qualifying round one for your singles. Kitchen, the only Husk Varna out there at the 41.342. Chad goes second. His team, or I'm sorry, his other Honda is back there in third. Chase sat up. Chad Coast's teammate is now fourth to 94 of Wells, 41.557. Cody Kopp is the only KTM in the, in the leaderboard, a 41.649. He's currently fifth. Well, that's because we saw Will have trouble with his bike. I don't think, I think that was one of his mechanics that was having trouble overheating. So they might be having to go back there and refocus a little bit right now. Yeah. So, you know, you know things happen. It could be the kind of it's, challenges you're dealing with It could with be a today. head game, exactly. So we'll see if they can gather things back up. Some other birthdays today. Isaac Hayes, the musician, you know, Shaft. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zach Prescott in our truck. Zach Prescott, he was in that picture earlier. He's the yeah. engineer of the truck down there. Man. Did you catch all that? Peyton Manning's uh, back up in college. Todd Helton, pitcher for the Colorado Rockies. <laughs> Man, trees, trees going deep there, isn't he? Brad Jones has some uh, too much time on his hands, I think, right now. Super Twins on the racetrack. This is their first round of qualifying. The one is Jared Meese, three, Briar Bauman, 32, Dallas Daniels, 95, J.D. Beach, 20. Jared Bandicoy now fifth in the point standings after last weekend. Robinson is on the 44, Bronson Bauman, 37, Davis Fisher, 67, Shayna Texter Bauman is the 52, 25, Ben Lau, 23, Jeffrey Carver on the XR750. In the 11, the Rack League Kieran Racing Indian Motorcycle, that is Andrew Luker. There's Briar on that three. He needs a good day today. He does, and he's more than capable of it. He definitely is. You know, Local he's a guy. Salinas, California guy. Exactly, as well as his brother. Monterey. And they spent time at home this week at their yep. original hometown during the weekend between Castle Rock and the uh, Zach Mile. So the has got the two and one pipe coming out the left side of that motorcycle, trying for some more horsepower. J.D. Beach right behind him on the 95-32. Dallas Daniels, look at the speedy shot right here on the front straightaway. There goes Mies. 4-0.327. That's the quickest lap of the day. The last lap by for Briar Bauman. The quickest we have seen all day from any class. Yeah, I told you he could do it here He today. was listening to you. Dallas, Dallas is right Daniels there. Dallas Daniels right on his heels. 4-0.374. They're getting faster out here. I think, Scotty, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch tonight because we're going to see the mental game really rise to the top here tonight. Mental game and throttle control. There's going to be so many factors tonight, Ralph. Yeah, I, it's, you're really, you're really going to have to work it to win it tonight. Even faster, J.D. Beach. Now even faster than that, Ooh, Dallas Daniels. 39.858. Prior Pryor got way offline in one and two. One Buddy bike got down in the 39 two. second range. Yeah, 39. Boy, that's flying. So Bauman trying to tuck in behind Dallas Daniels there. And, and when you slip the groove, you need to let off as, as, as quickly as you can. Take a look over your shoulder and then slide back onto the groove and then grab a handful. But you, you lose you lose track of who's right there in front of you, and yeah. you, you'll do your best to catch back up to him. And it's going to take him a good lap to get back to his groove, right? Yep, for sure. 32, Dallas Daniels, 95 right there. J.D. Beach, it looks like the three of Briars. He's trying to catch up these two Yamas, and that's a good move. He can keep up with those two, catch the draft of those two to try to lay down a quick lap. Right now, he's currently in the fourth spot. I don't know if he, you know, they have no idea what, how fast they're going right now. But if he can catch up with these two Yamahas, he, he knows that the Yamas are going to be fast today. 
They were really fast at the red mile both days. Briar's trying to keep him right there in his sights. Maybe catch a sniff of the draft. There's Meese on the one bike right here coming to the front straightaway. Galstanio's last lap by a 4.0.526. Meese goes up to second right there on that last lap, a 4.0.049 for the one bike. J.D. Beach right there at third. Look at Briar's actually catching up to those two route Yamahas right in front of him. Yep, he is. Maybe you can catch a sniff of the draft on the back straightaway. This is the last lap qualifying round one for your Super Twins. And Meese is right behind him. So this is going to be exciting here at the line. Keep your eyes at the start-finish line. We'll keep the eyes on the clock for you. Here they come. Top three and four all right here. Daniels, Meese, Beach, and Bauman. Beach swings up the inside. Look at that draft pass. This will be a fast lap for the 95. It won't surprise me if it takes the top spot, but no, it's the 32 even faster. Dallas Daniels, a 39.858. Actually, that was not his best left. The last lap was a 4.0.447. So they came out there and laid down some quick laps early on, maybe before the tires got a little heat in them. Yeah. So it is Dallas Daniels right now, our fast qualifier here in the Super Twins class. 39.858. There's a look at him. Yamaha, Indian Yamaha, Dallas, Jared Meese, JD Beach. Really close, 39.8, 40.0, and a 40.127. Look at Briar's not too far off of the 40.260. No, he's not. It's going to be fun to watch that high-speed chess match later on tonight. And these riders were told they could do a little practice start. They're stopping outside turn number four right now. If you're here with us, again, the, uh, the pit walk has been scratched. We'll get to the open pit area when we get done racing tonight. So the pits will be open. We get all done tonight, and also sending out happy birthdays. Kelly, who helps us out down there in the Mission Tent area, her birthday is actually tomorrow. No, to, yeah, tomorrow as well. So, oh, good so many happy birthdays. Birthday, Kelly. She's going to go with us to the Oakland A's game tomorrow. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. Are you driving? Yep. Good, good. You know your ways around. You. you know the shortcuts, I'll right? I'll be the wheel man. Yep. Go fast, turn left. Yeah. Okay, that's what we're going to do. That is it for qualifying round number one. All three classes have taken their times for qualifying round number one. We have another full round of qualifying. Again, the open paddock area was scheduled from 5 until 5.50. Has been scrapped. We're a little behind schedule. We're going to take more time to do some track maintenance, and we'll get straight or straighter into the opening ceremonies and then into our semifinals, our two dashes, which are challenge races, and then our three main events. So there's still a lot of racing action, and again, uh, you know, no open paddock area. You're more than welcome to go to the pits when we are done racing tonight. Did you ever do that when the races were over? That was some of my funnest go to the times. Pits when it was over? Absolutely. All the time. Yeah, that's when you go get down and get autographs. Every race. I remember as a little kid, I would go up and, and get tear offs. And, you know, take they get tear offs and sign them off their helmet. And give you. I, I came home with a stack of tear offs. My dad would just look at me like I was silly. He still looks at me that way. <laughs> and so does Brad yeah, Jones. We all look at you a little silly, but yeah, it's all right. we're used to you by now. It's all right. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, qualifying round number two out here at the Mission Sacramento Mile. And today's race is powered by the Law Tigers. We'll be back. Sometimes you need to disconnect to really connect with what's important. The all-new 2022 Indian Chief. Get lost and found at the same time.
you own the job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable, unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people to do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. Cometic Gasket is the official gasket of Progressive American Flat Track. For decades, Progressive American Flat Track champions have depended on Cometic to seal their engines. Cometic Gaskets are the professional standard for racers who demand the very best. For more information, log on to Cometic.com. Cometic Gasket, sealing championship since 1989. You don't take greatness for granted, and neither should your gear. We are Torch Eyewear, and we design sunglasses for protection, performance, and chasing your passion. For more information, visit our website at TorchEyewear.com and click on our free Home Try-On program. The 2022 season will see new challenges for Royal Enfield. More racing, more racers, and more energy than ever before. For the first time ever, the Moto Anatomy powered by Royal Enfield team will participate in the full calendar, including the miles and build train race grid, expanding to 15 riders and seven races. More action than ever before. Cena is proud to be the official motorcycle communication system of Progressive American Flat Track. Ride connected with industry-leading mesh and Bluetooth communication systems, plus sound by Harman Kardon speakers and microphone. Head over to the marketplace to demo one of Cena's premium motorcycle communication systems today. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler for our eighth year to Progressive American Flat Track, providing championship rings for each class in 2021. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs, from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda is proud to sponsor the Al Lamb's Dallas Honda Singles Challenge. It's a winner-take-all, $2,500 dash for cash. Enjoy the fastest and richest four laps in AFT singles racing. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda. DallasHonda.com. flat track to the strip to the street it's arp fasteners for your bike if it's for show or for go arp makes the highest quality and most dependable fasteners with strength for performance and good looks the speed demons of american flat track racing trust arp for maximum clamping force that leads to victory lane when failure is not an option it's arp-bolts.com no matter what you drive
We are downtown, old downtown Sacramento, right here at the Sacramento River, and we're going on the Super 73 ride. It is the Capital City Super Squad. There's a bunch of us. We're getting ready to have some fun. First, you start in old downtown, and everybody, you know, they have people blocking off the road. We make a hard left-hand turn through old downtown. Then we go onto a busy road. Then we drop into the trails. We saw the river. We saw everything. We saw a seal when we got started. It felt like I was in a motorcycle gang, like maybe the movie Wild Hogs. You know, there's a bunch of us, and everybody's looking around, high-fiving each other. This is cool. It was, it was a good way to promote flat track to people that don't know what it is. It was a bike squad. They're all coming to the races tonight, so it, it was awesome. And the bike ride, it's definitely on my calendar. It's on my to-do list when I come back to the Sacramento Mile next year. Man, that was a lot of fun earlier today. Ralph, you missed out. Yeah, it looked like a good time. I'll have to try and make that next year. There's a huge squad, Super 73 bicycles. We started the old downtown Sacramento. Old we Sacramento. Rolled, rolled yeah, through that's the that's streets called. and went by the Capitol building, got on the bike trail, and ended up right over here outside yep. Turn Number 2. It was, it was a lot of fun. Those Super 73s are a lot of fun, too. They really scoot along, huh? I, was, I think I had mine up to 30 miles an hour at one point. I'm just saying. 30. Wow. Yeah, almost as old as me. Almost. <laughs> uh, again, Down folks here. with the wind at your back? <laughs> yeah, exactly. For you folks that are in attendance, the open paddock area has been canceled until the end of the night. You'll be more than welcome to go to the pit area. Not canceled. We should say it's delayed until the end of the night. So we cannot cross the racetrack unless you do have a proper credential. Again, the open pit area will be open at the end of the night. So, uh, yeah, or if you can run 80 miles an hour between the water truck and the street sweeper, I'm just kidding. No, it's it's open at the end of the night, so we'll we'll uh, take the time right now to do some track maintenance, make this track as fast and as safe as possible. There's Steve Moorhead out there, the Finley Flyers talking on the radio. He's got a street sweeper out. I think he takes that with him everywhere he goes. He loves that thing, man. He's got more. I think he's got more laps on that than he does on a flat tracker. Pr probably so. Yeah. It you know, might be part of the new AFT video game coming out. Moorhead and the Street Sweeper. I love it. Yeah, Are you going to voice that one too? I would. Heck yeah. It, what, what you're saying, if you pay, I say? <laughs> if, if you're paying, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. There's Ralph Shaheen up here, the Sacramento native. Back out here at his home track. Ralph, did you have any fun, fun with any of your friends that oh, are around yeah. here? No, I've been, uh, I've been taking in all, as many friends as I could all week. It's been great. How was Monterey? You got to go down there and check out some really Monterey cool cars. Monterey was great, loaded with friends down there at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca during the Rolex Monterey Motorsports reunion. Got down there for some of that on Wednesday and Thursday. Out last night, opposite end of Arden Way down there at Luna. Mm -hmm. Last night with a whole bunch of friends. Got some coming out here tonight to take in the races. The Legends Autograph Session is about to wrap up down below. It's going on from 2.45 till 5.15. They also have banners for all of the Legends that are down there signing autographs. So if you want to take them some history, head on down there. you got a few moments left to catch the Legends as the geese are taken off out of the pond, headed towards turn number one and two. They want to go get a better seat to watch the races. But uh, there, there's a lot of Legends. We're down there aud signing autographs. Again, the Rookies of 79 selling memorabilia. There's the Motorcycle Lawyers Law Tigers booth. There's Mission Foods down there. Lots of people gathered in down there. The vendor row is right here between the racetrack and the grandstands. We could use some of those chips right now up here, couldn't we? And some of that salsa. Yeah. yeah. A little hungry. You can come down and see this guy right here. There he is, the legend Scotty Parker down there signing autographs. The winningest rider in American flat track history. 94 Grand National wins. Nine-time Grand National champion. Scott Parker is in the house. Saw him in woo. Hit, hit me one. Woo, woo, woo. Saw him. <laughs> see, he looked up right when he heard me, see? He's like, who's making fun of me? Scott Parker from Michigan, part of that Michigan mafia that was so strong for so many years. Please Springer's sign. here, too. Yep, Springer's here. He won back in 1982 here. Mike Kidd's down there. Ronnie Jones is here. He was down there signing autographs. He won the Boltaco Astro Challenge race last night at the uh, Lodi Cycle Bowl. Took home a big chunk of money last night. Ronnie Jones is down there signing autographs here at the Sacramento Mile. I love coming out here. They do things right. They've got uh, T-shirt vendors. They've got food trucks. They've got all kinds of stuff all throughout the whole area. Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on down there. i got a book about motorcycle racing in sacramento down there really yeah you bought one already i did man you how, how did you wait get to go shopping it. was i up here working already well i no, i got it <laughs> earlier and just brought it up here now yeah all right um, sacramento motorcycling a capital city tradition and where did you find that in one of the tents down there awesome the author is here that's cool yeah 
Once again, She'll the sign one for Miss Kimberly Reed Edwards. The open paddock area has been pushed back to the end of the night, so you are more than welcome to go to the pits when the racing action is all done. We're going to try to use whatever time we can to get the motorcycles back on the racetrack. Again, do a track maintenance. Here comes Moorhead on the street sweep. We're on to the front straightaway, taking care of all the business out here today. Jared Meese, is anybody going to beat him tonight, Ralph? He's won four in a row here at the Sacramento Mile. Jared is tough every time we swing a leg over a motorcycle and put a green flag out there right it doesn't matter if it's a mile short track whatever it is <laughs> jared is tough certainly think dallas daniels is showing the speed here tonight yeah dallas uh, again had a little mechanical issue last weekend at the castle rock tt but looks like he's hasn't affected him one bit but i don't think you can count out jared and briar bauman on the two indians tonight because i think the veteran experience is going to be a big part of who wins here tonight. And, and Ralph, throttle control, too. If, if, that's if, if they can be smoother on the throttle, in. the Yamahas might not hook up as well as the Indians. Right. We'll have to wait and see how it unfolds. And what happens to the racetrack, too? That's going to be a big part of it. I think when the sun goes down, the track will get a little bit faster. There, look, there's she the guys was. from the Hot Shoe Hall of Fame. Oh, man. They brought us some, He's the best. <laughs> some mission chips. If you've not checked out the Hot Shoe Hall of Fame, it is in Las Vegas, Nevada. See if we can... They're going to they're gonna make their way around and, and bring us some both, chips. Both members of it. We which are in the Hot Shoe Hall of Fame. That is in Las, Las Vegas, Nevada, down there on Fremont Street. Good to see those folks. they got a booth set up down there, and they've got some giveaways down there. They're part of a 501c3, so it's all yeah. for charity. Yeah, I was and down there don't... signing with some, some of our fellow inductees earlier at Garth Pro down there. And, Gonzo. Uh, yep, sitting with Garth and uh, Mike Rooney, Rune Dog, who does a lot of announcing here in Northern California, Jerry Bernardo. Yep. It's good to see Jerry. Craig Hancock is here. Speedway, Speedway legend. Yeah. Yeah, fat, Fast Friday's right up the street down in, over in Auburn. I used to announce up there. Really? Yep. You've been Friday everywhere. Nights. And then this. you got another Speedway track right off the backside over here, right? Cal Expo. Okay. Mike used to be over there, and I used to be up in Auburn. City of Industry, not too far away either. Another yeah, uh, SoCal. Yep. All right, we're taking a quick break in the action. We come back, we'll start our second round of qualifying. Mission Production Twins, you'll be up next. Singles and Super Twins, one more round of qualifying coming up here at the Sacramento Mile. That was Mike Bruce Landers down there. Saturday, September 3rd, and Sunday, September 4th, American Flat Track invades the Illinois State Fairgrounds for the granddaddy of them all, the legendary Springfield Mile. Labor Day weekend, witness the spectacle of America's top riders competing for fortune and glory at top speeds of over 140 miles per hour. Don't miss the Mission Foods Progressive Triple Crown Springfield Mile, presented by Drag Specialty. Get your tickets now at springfield-mile.com. DCT is an automatic transmission. You heard right, the Honda DCT is a fully automatic transmission. For a motorcycle, it'll shift faster than you can at the right time, right speed, and right RPM. And when you want to shift for yourself, use paddle shifters mounted on the left handlebar. Take a DCT demo on a new Honda Africa Twin and other available models. Schedule your DCT demo right now at Al Lamb's Dallas Honda. If you ever dreamed of blue skies, fresh air, and blue-green water, then look no further. If your idea of heaven on earth includes velvet golf courses, romantic evenings, and sun setting, then you owe it to yourself to check our Southwest Florida's beautiful Punta Gorda and its neighboring areas. At MyDigitalListing.com, we have been making dreams come true for over a decade. Supporters of American Flat Track since 1999, our team of professionals are ready to help you find your vacation, investment, and permanent new residence in paradise. job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable 
unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people to do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. The way this racetrack has turned out, AJ, is incredible. They can run high, low, middle, anywhere they want. We're talking eight riders in contention for this right now. track shapes what we build for the street and the dirt you can see how bad these guys want it a race to the line for us racing is not for the trophies or the glory we compete because it makes everything we do faster more durable and tested to a higher standard for sns racing is the ultimate in proven performance and we've been proving it since 1958 Brought to you by Yamaha and its best-in-class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you, too, can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off-road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com. Dunlop is the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. We make tires in America for racing and street racing, such as our creditworthy Progressive American Flat Track spec racing tire, the DT4, and the DT3, which is now the street legal K180. Learn more about Dunlop tires at DunlopMotorcycleTires.com. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. be known. Yeah, hi. Instead of letting passengers wrap their arms around us, can we put little handles on our jackets? Deny. Imagine. I want a new nickname. Can you guys start calling me Snake? No, Brian. Denied. How about we all get close to see if we can save with America's number one motorcycle insurer? Approved. Cool. Hey, if Brian's not going to be Snake, can I be Snake? No. no. We've always believed there's a right way to make something. It takes craft and dedication and working till it's your best. That's our standard. And we build motorcycles for people who share it. Designed and assembled by hand here at home the way we made them in 1901. The only way we know. Mm. We're still on break right now. We're having our chips up here, Mission Food Chips, and uh, man, they're too fast, too tasty. Ra Ralph, uh, thanks for having the, the chips delivered to our office. Well, I guess it comes with being in the Hot Shoe Hall of Fame. I, I want that bag right there. Look how big that is. That's a great bag. Yeah, look at there's the mission tent down everywhere there. Everywhere we go, that is uh, a beacon in the nighttime sky, as they say right there, yeah. right? 
I mean, we get uh, to... How, how great a sponsor get, is it to have Mission Foods on board? Listen, I have been a part of racing on television for over 30 years. I've seen all kinds of sponsors involved, and they all activate in different ways and do different things. I have never seen a better sponsor in motorsports than Mission. They're in it with both They feet. are fully, fully committed. Yep, there's free Mission chips down there on the concourse level between the racetrack and the grandstands. We eat every weekend lunch for free at that mission tent it's always outstanding food it's something different all the time but there's always plenty of mission chips and salsa there mm -hmm. it's like having a lifetime supply exactly it's incredible at every round yeah. american flat track it's not just for us it's for look they're it's handing the them, fans hand get their fans down here they're we'll just walk around. up and grab a bag of chips and some salsa and you get the little race cars and motorcycles and the chips. How cool is that? It's awesome. Look how many people are down here in this Vendor Row down here between, again, between the racetrack and the grandstands. Bikes are on the racetrack quick in a hurry. Here we go. Production Twins, final round of qualifying. 33, Jesse Janish, 1, Corey Texter, 60s, Nick Armstrong, 109, Billy Ross, the 10, Johnny Lewis, 34, Cameron Smith, the 15, Mikey Rush, 61, Casey Cisco, 47, Michael Hill, 45, Shelby Miller, in the 50, Jimmy McAllister. Look at the head shake coming off of turn number two for the 33 bike. And Mikey Rush has a little head shake as well. They'll bury him off into turn number three. Janish on the Harley Davidson. He's been quickest in practice, quickest so far in qualifying at the 4.0.839. That is what everybody is shooting for. Janish will bring him off of turn number four. There's Jimmy McAllister on the screen from Petaluma, California, the 50 bike. Listen to them all go thundering passes here on the front straightaway. Trying to keep it on the lowest part of the track. The quickest way around is the shortest way around the track, usually on most miles. Sometimes, every once in a while, you have somebody come along like Kevin Atherton and go up against the air fence and lay it really, let it all hang out, but it appears like the fast way around the racetrack right now is along the very bottom. Oh, cupcake. Cupcake, but he did a lot of things that nobody else would even try. Mm -hmm. Here comes 33 Janish bringing the fleet of motorcycles. Johnny Lewis taking a look down. Now he's tucked in and drafting. He looked down at his right foot for something. Maybe he's just bored going down those long straightaways. I remember Ralph going down these straightaways and it seemed like everything slowed down. You're going the fastest you ever go on a racetrack and it just seemed like everything went into slow motion. That you're on those straightaways for so long. And any racer will tell you you have to be able to do that. Yeah, you have to let it. You have to slow the world down. Yep, and focus on what's in front of you. Focus on what's next. You know, thinking about the next corner or thinking about even the next straightaway or, or how you're going to pass the guy in front of you and just let it happen. Would you, as you were going down the back straightaway, for example, and you're getting ready to set up for three, would you take a quick glance over to four to make sure everything's safe over there by you, the time you, you got there? You're always looking ahead a little bit to the left, yes. Even if there's somebody right in front of you, you're more focused on that, and you'll, you'll get to turn four eventually. But if somebody's right in front of you on a mile, you try to stay focused on him, but you're always also trying to look, you know, what's in front of that guy. Because if you make a draft pass, you're going to be gaining. It feels like you gain like 15 miles per hour. It's it's not that much, obviously, but you definitely gain some speed as Mikey Rush is closing in on the back of the, fit, the 33, but you're always looking ahead. Uh, it depends well, on how far. looking ahead, yeah, but like I know in like stock car racing, for example, they'll talk a lot about that when you're on a big super speedway is you're going into three, mm -hmm. glance over to four, because you never know what's happened over there or happening over there. By the time you get into three, you're going to be in four in just a second. And they have the luxury of having spotters and everything. These bikes don't have spotters. What I just saw right there, Ralph, is the 15. After he got by Jesse, he made a signal back, and he's like, okay, get in line. Let's work together. He signaled Jesse Jesse. These are two veterans in this production twins class. That was a veteran move. So he's trying to get the 33 to stay right behind him. It's not going to happen right here. Jesse's going to blast by. We'll take a look back at some head shake going on the back straight. Watch the 15. No, it's actually the rear end wiggling coming off the of turn number two. He had head shake, but it might have started at the back. It's a little tail shake right there. Maybe he's shaking his tail feathers coming off of turn number two, but it will affect the motorcycle towards the front of the bike. But uh, he definitely had some head shake at the end of the straightaway. So, But as I was saying, Mikey was trying actually to show Janish, say, hey, get back in line, stay behind me, and let's work together. Of course, it didn't work out, but uh, Janish and Rush still at the top two spots. 4-0.591, the quickest lap we've seen for Janish. Well, as you said, sometimes even if Janish wanted to stay tucked in behind him, 
you can't because it just pulls you right past. Yeah, he might have had too much momentum. But, again, I think he was just trying to get those two to work together. Two Harley Davidsons out there, same brand, trying to sneak away. And they're in the two, top two spots. Janish, a 4-0.591. The last lap was the fastest lap he has turned all day long. And now he's pulling away from Rush. Here he comes to the checkered flag. Janish will be fastest in practice and will be our fast qualifier here today. Rush right there second. Corey Texter is third overall, not necessarily in this round. Yeah, but Rush and Janish, when they were working together, when they were locked together, he knows the tail. 4-0.591 and a 4-0.662. Janish will be our fast qualifier. He'll have the first spot in our first semifinal for production twins. There it is. Two Harleys, one and two. Yamaha in third, our two-time champ. Billy Ross in fourth. The the defending champ gets to run the number one plate the next year. So Corey Texter in his final season will run the number one as he'll make his exit away from American Flat Track at the end of the year. Johnny Lewis, the Royal Infield, is fifth. That's going to be it for qualifying four-year production twins class. And, and don't forget, they are racing for those championship rings right now. Your points leader coming into this round is Jesse Janish right here. Again, they're racing to the rings. The championship rings are designed by each of the riders in all three classes right now. Your championship points leaders, the 33, Jesse Janish on the Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson, and he'll be able to design his very own championship ring from Tom Duma Fine Jewelers, and that's something I don't have. And there's your points leader coming into the AFT singles class right here. He's got a big points lead, the 12, Cody Kopp, the factory Red Bull KTM rider. He's getting ready to enter the racetrack, and if he can win that championship, he'll design his own championship ring. That was class number two. And our third class is the Mission Super Twins as the bikes are rolling onto the racetrack here. Jared Meese is our current points leader in the Super Twins. Again, racing for that championship ring. If they win the championship, they design their own. And that's a trophy that you could take with you the rest of your life, right? I mean, it's a ring that you get to design. It's a one of a kind, and you can carry that on with you the rest of your life. So, singles back on the racetrack. The time to beat in the first round of qualifying was Brandon Kitchen, a 4-1.342. We'll see if anybody can go faster than that. The production twins are about three tenths of a second faster the last time out. So, the track, after that last little moisture, maybe it's cooling down a little bit outside. There's more moisture on the racetrack, but also there's more rubber being laid on the racetrack, which should make the track get faster and faster. Cop leads them off, but actually that's one of the Turner Hondas lead them off of turn four. It's Mishler, then Cop. 79, Dalton Gautier. Three riders starting to pull away just a little bit. Nobody seems like they're working together. There's two Turner Hondas out there with one Red Bull KTM down the back straightaway. Mishler, 13th. He's currently, uh, he, he's number 13. He's currently sixth overall in qualifying. Gets a little bit sideways going into turn number three. Man, the back end kind of stepped out just a little bit. The 12 bike was able to close up on him. Ralph, did you see that going into turn three? Boy, that's got to be an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah, you, you don't want it to step out that much. I mean, it just... The back end just kind of started coming around just a little bit. You have to let off, grab, a, grab some brake, and that definitely slows you down. Mishler, 4-1.463. Cody Kopp now, our new quick time. Cody Kopp, a 4-1.192. The 12 bike laying down the hammer right now. It's time to go fast. He's caught up to the leader right in front of him. He'll be able to catch the draft on the back straightaway. I don't think he's close enough. Maybe he'll have it set up for this next time on the front side. 4-1.192, last time by for Cody Kopp. That's the quickest. It's quicker than the first round. The first round was a 4-1.342 by Kitchen, who's in the second group of riders. Kopp right there, trying to keep up with the leader, coming off a of four. Here comes Kopp, swinging up the inside, not able to make the draft pass. So that means that 13 is a horse. See if he can hold off the hard charge of number 12 right there. Cop, Gautier, Kitchen, your top three. Again, Kitchen's in that next group. Cop is right there on the back tire of the leader, but he's not able to make the draft. Now he's close enough to make the draft pass, but will he do it? And he'll back off going into three. No need to push the issue. It's only practice and qualifying right now. Maybe it's race time. He would have stuck the wheel in there. Cop gets out of line, actually slows himself down a little bit, so he's lost touch with the leader. The 13 of Mishler currently third here in this second round on the 13 bike. 4-1.367, though, that's been his fastest lap of the day. Mishler, Cop, Gautier, your top three. Trent Lowe's currently fifth in the uh, overall times. He's in 
Because that just went away. He's fifth in this second round at 41.657, but he is ninth overall is uh, the 48 Trent Lowe. Bruner, who won here both times when we were here last year, he's currently fourth quickest on the Estes and Yamaha. Now Cody Kopp is at the top spot, the 12, 41.192. That's the fastest lap we've seen in the singles. The second bike on the racetrack is the fastest we have seen so far. Cody Kopp on the 12. Closing in on Mishler on the 13. He's right here on the back tire now. This might be a good opportunity for Cody Kopp to see if he can make the draft pass. He looks over his shoulder right there. He gets back in, tucks in. And now he's lost power. The 12 bike lost, loses power down the back straightaway. Cody Kopp. Having an issue coming off of turn number two. He, he knew it. He feels it right there. Now he's going to try to stop and get off of the racing surface. A good move right there just in case anything's going on. He's out of the racetrack area. He is in the infield. Now he's going to come back. No, he's going to stay over there on the infield surface. I, I think that's a good move. He'll take that. The bike is still running, so something happened. Looks like there's air in both tires, but he felt like something was going on. So 12 bike. Maybe pulling. he slipped coming off the corner and knew that it lost the lap. We'll take a look at the replay right here, see what happens. So he come off a of turn number two, watch the second bike right here, the 12 bike, and it just comes up a little bit short right there, pulls in the clutch, and he knew it right away. Right away. He's downshifting, but the bike kept running. So uh, he's actually coasting right now in the infield of the racetrack. So Cody Kopp, and he's bummed about that, but he is our quick time right now. He's running the motorcycle back. He's over there in turn four. He is a long ways away, so the bike is not running anymore. He's actually running it back, and now he's hopped on board. But again, they're uh, having an issue on that Red Bull KTM. But Cody Kopp is our fast time so far. Two more groups to go. It's Cody Kopp with a 4-0.643. Look at that. There is Tom McGrain. We go give him a push back to the pit area. That's what our family is about right there. It's flat track family. Two completely different teams, two different competitors. There you have Cody a push back to the pit area. Tough break for the 12 bike. The rest yeah, of that's a shame. Boy, he looked like he was on a flyer too, didn't it? Yeah, he that was, that was going to be a quick lap. And the last time by was a 4-0.673. So Cody, uh, again, who had the luxury of the, the draft from the 13 bike right in front of him. Morgan Mitchell up there second, 4-1.011. Look at that, Joe Cops trying to figure out exactly what happened. We had a chance to talk with Joe down there earlier today in the Mission Tent. He said Cody was really feeling good and relaxed and loose this week, and he that's, expected good things out of his kid. That's good, especially after falling off last week at the Castle Rock TT. Group two coming onto the racetrack, 24, Hunter Bauer. 80, Brandon Kitchen again. He still has to take his bike through tech when he comes off the racetrack, so he can't go straight back to work on it yet to make sure that bike is legal. So it's Bauer the 24, 80's Kitchen, 113, Gage Smith, 49, Chad Coast, 377, Ferran Carduce, 82, Travis Petten, 63, Jared Lowe, 94 is Ryan Wells, 55, Tyler Raggio. That's group number two. Keep your eyes on the 80 of Kitchen. He was fastest in the first round of qualifying. Can he back that up here in round number two? Leaders are in turn number four right now. They'll get the green flag and the clocks will start this time across that start finish line. Here they come off of turn number four. Chad Coase, Brandon Kitchen, two riders peeling away from everybody else. First impression Honda, Vance and Hines, Husqvarna, the top two riders on the racetrack right now, pulling out of turn number two onto the back straightaway. Chad Coase gets the drive. Kitchen will see if he can make the draft pass down the back straightaway, closing in on him. Here he's come. He's sneaking a peek and he makes the draft pass up the inside. That was a classic mile pass right there. Kitchen goes to the point. Kitchen was fast qualifier for that first round. He's still fourth overall right now to the track. It looks like it got a little bit faster. So we'll see what Kitchen can back up his first round of qualifying. This should be a fast lap for both these two riders. They didn't mix it up with each other. They actually used each other to go fast. Kitchen up to third now, 4-1.201 for the Vance and Hines. Husk Varna, the 80 bike, goes up to third. He brings the 49 up to fifth, a 4-1.359 for Chad Coase. His last lap for Coast was a 4-1.480, so that wasn't as fast as his first round. We'll see if the 49 and the 80 can work together. This is our fine, our group number two of our final round of qualifying. Bring him off a of four. Here comes Kitchen and Chad Coast. Kitchen's kind of broke, broken away from Chad Coast. Going to leave him in the dust. Kitchen on the 80. 
Last up a 4-1.288, so it wasn't as fast as when he had Chad Coase right there to work with. Coase has lost touch with the leader. Chad Coase currently fifth overall. Kitchen on the 80 bike on the screen right now is uh, third overall, 4-1.201. Quick time, what they're looking for is a 4-0.673, about a half a second faster than anybody else before that mechanical issue happened, though. Later off the turn number four onto the front straightaway. 80 bike, Brandon Kitchen. Chad Coase. Here's a freight train, Travis Petten on the 82. 113 Gage Smith. Tulsa, Oklahoma rider, there's Ryan Wells in 94. Here's Chad Coase got a little bit sideways right in the middle of that turn one and two. We barely caught that on the camera. Word from the pit is that I'm hearing is Cody Cobb's bike ran out of gas. So a costly mistake, but you know, when you're trying to keep the bike as light as possible, he put just a little bit of fuel in there, and that's what I'm hearing on the competition radio. So hopefully that is the only issue. When you start the bike for fuel when they're wide open, it might not be a good thing for that motor, though. Kitchen, the last time by, is a little bit faster, 41.042. So Kitchen, without any help, is in there the third spot, 41.042, which is more impressive, I think, than Cody Kopp and Morgan Mitchell working together, 40.673. But right now it's Kitchen, third overall, 41.042. One bike in the 42nd range here in the singles class. That's Cody Cop 40.673. Checkered flag is out for Kitchen on the 80. Coast on the 49. Hunter Bauer, the 24. Hunter back there in 14th overall. His last lap was his fastest. Petten up to 10th. The 82, 41.705. Wells was out there in the 94, 41.557. The top eight spots will fill up the first two rows of their semifinals. Kitchen goes to second on that last lap of 40.913 for the Vance and Hines Husk Varna. 40.913 for Kitchen. Again, without any drafting help, Ralph, that's an impressive lap to go up to second overall. That's a great lap. I mean, you know, that's just hitting it right. Yeah, hitting your marks, getting on the throttle when you need to, and again, without any drafting help, as he broke away from Chad Coase, and, you know, in the first round, Cody, or in the first group, Cody Kopp was working with Morgan Mishler, maybe not on the same team, but they were drafting together. That was impressive for Kitchen to break away by himself. He's up to second overall with one more group to go. Kopp, Kitchen, Mishler, Gautier, Chad Coase. I like it. I do too. KTM. Maxwell, I think, would like to move up a little bit. Husk, Varna, Hondas. Your top three, three different brands. Looks like one bike is slowing down outside turn number four. We got a bike in turn number four right now. Looks like he's going to get a little bit of a help, a push back right now. I'm not sure which bike it is. Possibly Gage Smith uh, getting, like a Honda. getting some assistance. That's Travis Pett in the 82. Travis Pett in the fourth will get a push back. He's already pushed the bike into the infield. Moorhead says, get on out of here. We're going to get back onto the racetrack. <laughs> Up next, group number three, AFT Singles, their final round of qualifying. 91, Justin Jones. 175, Terrence Santero. 119, Logan McGrain. 132 is Bronson Pierce. 195, Clayton Williams. 229, Noah Miller. 121, Jacob Cassio. The 101, Suzuki, is Grant Holmes. Here we go. Final group, final round of qualifying for your singles class. These guys had a slow race getting up to speed in that last time they came out to the racetrack. Nobody wanted to go out and show the fast way around. Cassio says, I have nothing to do with that. He's going to take and got to check out on that 121. Yeah, the bottom lines appearing to get a little bit of dust. You know, when they when they drag the left foot on the inside, it kind of kicks up a little bit of dust onto the group. Second round of qualifying, last group of your AFT singles. And again, when they go a little bit low, they're actually kicking up a little bit of dust. There's an inside dirt berm up marking the inside of the racetrack, Ralph. If they kick that or touch that at all, it'll bring some dry dirt onto the racing line. Yeah, you get that, like, 
gravelly, they would call a rubber on a pavement track, kind or of up on the... I think in flat track, you, you call it like marbles. Yeah, like if you, you hit some loose dirt, and, and it could be a defense mechanism if you got... You know, hey, I, I, I don't know, I'm just saying. Not that you would ever do such a thing. No. I wouldn't give myself an advantage. That one time, <laughs> Parker was right on your tail. <laughs> right. At one time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Before we pulled onto the racetrack? Yeah, right. He was right there, and you just kicked a little dirt up in his face. Yeah. Take that, Scotty. I do have you a... You and your nine championships. Exactly. Scotty and Scotty. I was out in front of Scotty Parker at his semi, a last chance to get in a main event at Daytona Short Track. My coil wire came off the motorcycle, oh. and I did not finish that race. That, yeah, that was my biggest disappointment, because to be in front of Scotty Parker at any, any point in your career, it's amazing. It was only a qualifying race. It was a semifinal, but uh, man, to let a uh, five-cent part or a wire come undone was uh, pretty disappointing. It's always a story, though, right? Yeah. Well, listen, Scotty, we pick on you about that stuff all the time, just out of fun. I know. And out of love for you, brother, but... Listen, here's here's the ultimate deal. Yep. You were on the racetrack at the same time as Scotty Parker. True. None of us can say that. I appreciate that, Ralph. It was a lot of fun. Oh, I bet. And I loved coming out here to this track. You know, this track was always uh, one of my check marks on the, the schedule. When we started racing, you know, and, and we, we could race on a mile on a 600. I raced here on the Laurel Lake 883 a few times. Yep. I actually rode their 600 here before, too. And and blew that thing to smithereens coming down the front straightaway once. But, uh, you know, this one was always fun to come out here and race. Always a great crowd here in, in Sacramento. You know, we did some speed sport interviews with some of the top guys that ever raced here. We had Parker and Springer, and we had uh, Mert Lawwell, who's here today. And we talked with Brian, and we talked with Jerry, some of the greats that have, Mike Kidd, that have raced here. Can, can people go back and listen to those yes, right now? Yes, how can they, they, how can can they find, find those interviews? Speedsport.com. Okay. Oh, rider down, rider down. Turns one and two. It's Cassio, the 121. And he goes for a slide, but that motorcycle is right there on the groove. He's up and on his feet. He gets out of harm's way, but that motorcycle is Boy, that right was there. Hearing for the guy coming behind him, wasn't it? Oh, I got my heart rate going. But I, th I was going to say is everybody in that group that we talked with, all six of them, they all commented on how great the fans are. Here in Sacramento, how much they're knowledgeable about the sport, into but, the sport, and you know, would cheer loudly every time. Well, they're all your friends. You invited all of them out here, right? <laughs> I, I feel like they're all friends. Yeah. <laughs> Man, there's. There, I had a guy come up to me earlier today. He said he saw me out here back in the '70s, I think it was, or something like that. And uh, you know, just just great. Here's a replay. Watch the 121 trying to get in on the high side of the 101 of Grant Holmes. The front end just starts, starts going away, and there goes the back end around. Like a, they pointed out in the truck, there's a little bit of a dry or dusty area kicking up from the inside. So he, he just goes for a slide. But that's a, the that's corner, a, didn't yeah, it's a classic low side, and you know his uh, his tailbone, his left butt cheek's going to be a little slower, sore tomorrow morning. Hmm. Yeah, best case scenario, yeah, going down on a mile. Take that all day compared yeah, to the sure, opposite option. Sure. See, you see, he looks like he's a football player now. His airbags. How much put chance to get the 121 right there? Jacob Cassio going down. He's all right. The airbag suit is puffed up for sure, so he'll try to deflate that thing. Sometimes you got to get a big bear hug to uh, squeeze that down. The good news is he didn't get into the air fence. He didn't tear up the racetrack too much. Of course, there's going to be a, a nice rut going into that corner from that foot peg that slid down the racetrack. One of the greatest inventions in safety in all of motorsports. As Brad Jones would say, absolutely. Seriously. It is. No, it, it's, it's fantastic. I wish safety, we had those Safety barrier, I was racing. Hans device, airbag. And Not necessarily know, in that order, but just. And, and, and who knows what's next? I mean, I love that they're, they're, they're trying new things to keep our riders safe. Well, the thing about motorsports, sadly, is we tend to be more reactive than proactive when it comes to safety because we learn from what we witness and what we see and then we go back and we study and we try to figure out how to make it better correct i'll tell you another one that was a great one is you know, 100 years ago but we don't give it enough credit and that's the parachute and drag racing oh yes for sure bill simpson no kidding look at this the last time this group came out they all went as slow as they could to get going now all six yeah all six riders are nose to tail through turns one and two I think they know it's go time. This is their last time out here for qualifying. How they finish in qualifying will set their field for our semifinals. And then I start fanning out just a little bit down the back straightaway. But it was funny how they went as slow as they could the last time out there. Now they're all going out there as fast as they can right away. And Simpson would go down the street in the station where I can get it up to speed and have somebody throw it out the back. Just to test it. Test it. No kidding. 
he wanted to save his drag racing buddies and keep them safe. It definitely did that. Here they come off of four, last group, last round of qualifying for your AFT singles class. The time to beat, 4 0 T-Money, Terrence Santero out front, the 175 bike. He's been injured, he got injured last year and missed a few of the rounds earlier this season. As one rider slips off the groove at the back of the pack, they keep on trucking, but Santero will lead the group off of turn number two. Right behind him in the draft is the first impressions, Honda number 91, Justin Jones, all the way from Holly, New York. He's gonna look up the inside, makes the draft pass going into turn number three. Jones to the top spot on the racetrack. This is qualifying racing against the top st stopwatch right now. Jones currently in the 14th overall starting, or er, 14th overall, overall qualifying position. White flag, one to go. Karen Santero, Grant Holmes on the 101. Cassio's back and going. On the number 121, he's the fourth rider on the racetrack. That's the one that fell off, and he slips off the groove just as I start talking about him again in the exact same spot. Maybe he's going in at turn one a little bit too hot, a little bit too fast as the uh, Honda rider slips off the groove down there, coming off a two nice doing a wheelie down the back straightaway. Justin Jones slipped off the groove and says, hey, this lap's ruined. I might as well have some fun. I like how some of these fans up here are trying to scoot over and get in the shade of the uh, poles right here. You guys are pretty smart. I like it. Smart thinking. Leaders off the turn four. Checkered flag coming out. This is our final group. Final round of qualifying for your singles riders. Santero to the checkered flag on the 175. Currently 22nd quick. Right behind him is the 101 Grant Holmes. He's 20th qualifier overall to 0.579. The Super Twins riders are just now making their way to the staging area. And don't forget the rider Autograph session has been postponed until after the event tonight, so you can go to the to the pits and meet your favorite rider when we get all done. So Cody Cop is your. How, how do they meet you? I know a lot of the fans would like to meet you. I'll go to the infield when we get done today. Okay. All right. Well, you're the one that wants to go eat, so if you oh. if you got time, you got to have a lot of friends here too. I, so I've got to take I've got to take Tree, our producer, yep. over to Leatherby's for. Some ice cream later. So maybe we can meet everybody over there. This guy right here in front of us knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Ice yeah. cream sounds good around a hot day. Oh, yeah. And, and Kristen we, Beast. And we, go. I owe her a lot of ice you cream. You owe her I've, a lot I've of ice cream. I lost a few bets to her, and I think the first one was at Weed Sport, so I owe her some ice cream for sure. Well, the best ice cream to date came at uh, Port... No, um, it was Weed Sport. Weed Sport had Weed some Sport, good ice cream. We had, we had ice some, but I was supposed and to... Then I was, last I had night, a yeah. last night we upped You the topped it? We topped it. Uh, with nuts and a cherry, by the and way. I, I was at the Lodi Cycle Bowl having fun with my buddy Al oh, sitting you, right here in front of me. And, and your need for 20 bucks. It, well, yeah. I mean, I, I had to go to work. Al's not even paying attention to me. So he's sitting right here in front of me, not even listening. He's thinking, I can't believe I paid him 20 bucks. It's, he's not turning around. He's, he's thinking I should have paid him 15. Super Twins rolling onto the racetrack for their final round of qualifying. The one, Jared Meese, three, Briar Bauman, 32, Dallas Daniels, 95, J.D. Beach, the 20. Jared Vandekoy, 44, is Brandon Robinson, 37, Bronson Bauman, 67, Davis Fisher, 52, Shane, that's extra Bauman, 25, Ben Lau, 23, Jeffrey Carver. The 11 is Andrew Luker. Final round of qualifying. Opening ceremony will be coming up in a few moments. After that, we'll get into our semifinals. A big night of racing action out here at the legendary Sacramento Mile. Everybody spread out in this one. The time to beat a 39.858 from Dallas Daniels. Daniels won the Red Mile here in his rookie season in the Super Twins class. Bronson second on the racetrack to 37, Harley Davidson. Yeah, there's some dust kicking up on that very bottom line. So these might not be very fast laps right now because we've had three different classes out there without some track maintenance. So this might not be that great of a racetrack for, for the might, times. It might be a very important learning session, though, Correct. Right, these guys. The track will go through changes throughout the night. So you have to adapt to the track that's in front of you. Briar out front on the three motorcycle. There's Bronson, his younger brother, the 37. Dallas Daniels right behind him on the Essence and Racing Monster Energy Yamaha Racing Entry. There goes Breyer into turn number one. Dallas goes by Bronson across the start finish line. Second bike on the racetrack is the 30. Oh, Bronson has a scary moment right there. Sits straight up to keep from going down on that Harley Davidson. He's up on two wheels, but a little scary moment right there for Brombo. Take a look back at the replay. Watch the second bike right here, the 37. 
gets a little skittery right there and gets a little bit sideways and he lets up instead of uh, you know just barely cracking the throttle it didn't catch in high siding so that was a good thing and it looked like you know when the, when the track surface goes from that slick slip slippery blue groove to that dryer stuff out there sometimes it can spit Twitch, you off twitchy yeah yeah Twenty-three Jeffrey Carver out there on the XR 750. There's Briar, two-time champ here in the Premier Class Mission Super Twins. Out there all by himself, putting in good laps. Jared Meese is the new fast qualifier, the one by three nine point six seven one. How about that? Even faster than Dallas in that first round. Dallas is actually that's his fastest lap was the last time by the thirty-two, getting faster. Right now, Briar's in third, three nine point eight. So two Indians. Briar goes right to the top of the 39.579. Oh, he, he slips up over here and turns one and two. Just the oh, exact yeah, same spot of his brother does the exact same thing right here. So that's how costly it is if you make one little mistake. Well, we heard Brian Smith say how you have to run it so courageously deep into the corner here. But then, boy, you're really going to have to dance through the center part of the corner. Maybe that's where it's getting tricky for these guys. And we're on Jared Meese right now, who's our new fast qualifier, 39.556. That's the fastest lap we have seen was the last time by. So we've been talking about the track all day, Ralph, but it's getting faster. And look at the guys that have joined into the 39 second club here. J.D. Beach, Brandon Robinson, Davis Fisher, Daniels, Bauman, and Meese. As the white comes out, one to go. Dallas Daniels to the top spot, 39.346 for the Yamaha. Another bite goes off the groove down there in one and two. This time it's Jared Meese, and he Boy, takes are, a look down. They are running it really deep into one. And there goes another one down in turn number one. Ryder down in the first corner up to the air fence and doesn't get all the way to the air fence, but uh, they were just on their white flag lap. He's out of harm's way, but the red wheeling lights are, are on all the way around the racetrack, and that is the 25 of the Holly Hot Rod, Ben Lau. And that's the trouble spot right now. It appears entering turn one and going into turn number two. You think it's because of how, how hard they're running it down into the corner, Scotty? I, I think so. And, and trying to get it wowed down and going into that corner. And you can see the sun is really beating down on turns one where it's a little different when you enter turn three. So uh, it seems like the entrance to these corners are a little bit different on each end of the racetrack. Ben Lau's up and looks like he kept the Indian running and pulled away. It's Ben Lau, the Holly Hot Rod. He's got his left foot hanging off the motorcycle, but he's probably just trying to stretch it out a little bit. He's up and okay. They were just about done with this final round of qualifying, but how about Dallas Daniels, our new quick time, the last time by a 39.346 by the Yamaha. Jared Meese, 39.556, who's won here the last four times in a row. Three bike prior, but I'm in third, 39.579. Davis Fish are a good job so far. The 67 bike, 39.704. Brandon Robinson, the 39.85. And JD Beach, a 39.857. So six bikes in the 39 second range. Davis is on it right now, 39.7. Scotty, did you sleep good the night before a mile, or were you restless more <laughs> so than, say, uh, a yeah. half mile or a TT? Or? Most of the time, we were driving to the race, so there wasn't a lot of sleep going on. Going yeah, on. yeah. You know, as, as a privateer, as me and my dad, we take turns driving. But at, later in my career, when I rode for, for Laurel Lake Racing, you know, Lorraine and Al Bergstrom yeah. and, and Rod Lake, you know, I would sleep good. I mean, you, you wanted to rest. You, you were obviously in a different bed. You know, sometimes a hotel room, sometimes you stay with but friends. But your mind didn't... No, I, I would shut it off and, and not think about the race tomorrow. Not think about the next day. You think about, you know, what's going on. But, you know, you try to, try to just focus on something else. you hear racers else. talk about, you know, racing on speedways or at places like Indianapolis where, you know, the speeds are higher, the risk factor is greater, that, you know, sometimes it's a restless sleep the night before. Right. Sometimes, you know, depending on who you stayed with, sometimes you watch old movies of the previous race, you know, the racetrack you're going to mm. the next night. You know, if you could stay with some friends that had it on the old VCR yeah. tapes, you know. Or you're, if you're with Ronnie Jones and you're watching cartoons. <laughs> 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 well, Ronnie was my teammate, and, man, he was flying last night, Ralph. I wish he could have came down to the Lodi, I but wish he I won the Astro oh, Challenge last that. night. Charlie Roberts was in second the entire race until the last lap, and that his bike slowed down, so Gonzo Garth Brow snuck on by, got second. Charlie Roberts was third last night. And they had a big purse up for grabs, and uh, congratulations to Ronnie. And looks like some of the bikes are actually pushing back to the pit area. So that looks like that's going to be gonna be released for the 20 bike. Yeah. He's going back to the pits. He said, I'm done with qualifying. So is the 67 of Fisher. Not all the bikes are leaving the racetrack. Bri 
Yep, they They're are. Done. They are going back there. That's it for qualifying. Track prep is up next. Our fast qualifiers right there, the 32, Dallas Daniels. All right. We just got an update. Opening ceremonies will be coming up tonight at 6.30 p.m. Again, the paddock area. The open paddock will be postponed until after the race tonight. So the pits will be open for all the spectators after the race tonight. Dallas Daniels, your fast qualifier. There he is, the double D on the screen right now. Congratulations to Dallas, our fast qualifier, 39.346. Jared Meese, 39.556. Brian Malman is third. So we have a break right now. If you're, if you're here with us, stop by, see what's going on. Vinda Rose downstairs. That Honda Talon is down there. Richie Morris has some T-shirts down there from Progressive Insurance in Honda. They're going to shoot Speaking some into the Speaking of birthday boys, yeah, he had his one earlier yesterday. this week. Yesterday also, same yesterday, day as me. Yeah. Maybe he's my twin brother that I didn't Could know be. about. Yeah, you never know. All right. Opening ceremonies at 6.30. We're gonna take a break in the action. We'll be back in a little bit. Again, opening ceremony, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll be back. Saturday, September 3rd, and Sunday, September 4th, American Flat Track invades the Illinois State Fairgrounds for the granddaddy of them all, the legendary Springfield Mile. Labor Day weekend, witness the spectacle of America's top riders competing for fortune and glory at top speeds of over 140 miles per hour. Don't miss the Mission Foods Progressive Triple Crown Springfield Mile, presented by Drag Specialties. Get your tickets now at springfield-mile.com. Sometimes you need to disconnect to really connect with what's important. The all-new 2022 Indian Chief. Get lost and found at the same time. Hey, is that your stomach growling? Or the sound of thousands of CCs circling the track? Fuel up for race day with Mission Foods. Rev those taste buds with fast and easy to create recipes that are winner's circle delicious. Try some of our mouth-watering tacos to piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. Start those engines, because Mission has you covered from the green flag to the checkered flag. Now that's too fast, too tasty. The loyal Riders, let your queries be known. Yeah, hi. Instead of letting passengers wrap their arms around us, can we put little handles on our jackets? Deny. Imagine. I want a new nickname. Can you guys start calling me Snake? No, Brian. Denied. How about we all get close to see if we can save with America's number one motorcycle insurer? Approved. Cool. Hey, if Brian's not going to be Snake, can I be Snake? No. no. Speedsport has been America's motorsports authority since 1934. Get news, results, and commentary from the most connected experts in the business. Covering all forms of motorsports from flat track to NASCAR and everything in between. Bookmark Speedsport.com on your mobile device now. Or follow Speedsport on social. And be sure to subscribe to the Speedsport Daily. Speedsport is your one-stop shop for all things racing on two wheels and four. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda is proud to sponsor the Al Lamb's Dallas Honda Singles Challenge. It's a winner-take-all, $2,500 dash for cash. Enjoy the fastest and richest four laps in AFT singles racing. Al Lamb's Dallas Honda, DallasHonda.com. The 2022 season will see new challenges for Royal Enfield. More racing, more racers, and more energy than ever before. For the first time ever, the Moto Anatomy, powered by Royal Enfield team, will participate in the full calendar, including the miles and build train race grid, expanding to 15 riders and seven races. More action than ever before. 
Cena is proud to be the official motorcycle communication system of Progressive American Flat Track. Ride connected with industry-leading mesh and Bluetooth communication systems, plus sound by Harman Kardon speakers and microphone. Head over to the marketplace to demo one of Cena's premium motorcycle communication systems today. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler for our eighth year to Progressive American Flat Track, providing championship rings for each class in 2021. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. Klotz Synthetic Lubricants is proud to be the official lubricant of American Flat Track. Family owned and made in America since 1959, Klotz has built its reputation by answering the call of racers and performance enthusiasts who won't settle for anything less than superior synthetic lubricants. Racers and performance buffs around the world rely on Klotz to get them to the checkered flag. Order today at KlotzLube.com. Mobile View has been providing state-of-the-art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. With over 300 World Championship titles, for 44 years, Olean's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports, for road or track, dirt or asphalt. When you choose Olean's products to elevate your performance, you get Olean's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. Memphis Shades brings you a whole new level of style when it comes to motorcycle windshields and fairings. The quality, style, and selection set these products apart from the pack. Memphis Shades designs and builds all windshields, fairings, and hardware in-house. Raw materials in, finished goods out. Made in Memphis. Style that works. Sideburn is the world's finest go-fast turn-left magazine. It is available to buy at Progressive AFT's Trackside Merchandise Booths and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit SideburnMagazine.com. Dunlop is proud to be the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. What we learn from racing is rolled into our production tires, such as the Dunlop K180, a street-legal version of the aggressive DT3 Flat Track tire with the K180. Street riders can now have the authentic flat track tire experience. No other tire company has won more American motorcycle championships than Dunlop. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. We've always believed there is a right way to make something. It takes craft and dedication and working till it's your best. That's our standard. And we build motorcycles for people who share it. Designed and assembled by hand, here at home, the way we made them in 1901, the only way we know.